us went back to camp. The rest of us went back to the something respite in. Not just uh, carts. The carriages with drivers. Yes, carriages. Yep. So there was there was carriages with drivers. One of them was was leeches, who you've uh, come to realize is, is is quite the unique character. His name is Leslie. Um, you guys ended he up. He drives the Leslie Gini. He, he drives the Leslie cart. Um, carriage thing. Uh. Yeah. What's, yeah, so what's the end called that we're at? It's it's the respite of something. I have I did not have that pulled up. Kaya's. Kaya's respite. Right? Kaya's respite. Yes. Kaya's this house, is Kaya's all from repose, memory. I'm good at this. Repose. Not respite. Oh, repose. Yeah. So I think all of us except for Vile spent the night there, got rested. Vile yep. did Vile things and then came in in the morning. And you guys, you guys got a, a discount there because that I didn't I didn't charge correctly. <laughs> so you got a first night yep. discount. <laughs> um, after that, we went to uh, Victor's. No. Vivaldi's. Vivaldi's. Went to Vivaldi's for all the rental stuff where he majorly, royally screwed up almost everyone's stuff. Ah, uh, um, nah, so we... he did fine, I think. So we went down to the Coliseum, fought a couple and of all dudes, the, all the gnome stuff got all there. our stuff back. Uber. Yeah, and then, uh, so the dudes, the, the one we fought body and brute. was so impressed by your fighting techniques and styles that he wanted to follow you along, and you guys said no. Then you we guys... said we'd come back for him. I later. said no. Well, there are people who said no, and then there's other people who said they'd come back for him later, maybe, and so he's just going to sit here and chill. You guys are all basically regrouping after your fight. Um, and Uber made a bit of extra coin. <laughs> yep, so uh, you guys at this point have had the effects of a short rest, so any hit dice you want to spend to recover hit points, you can do that now. Oh god, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, thanks, good. How does that work? You roll your so you, hit you, dice as many you as you roll want. Roll your hit dice as many as you want up to the number that you have. Um, and you regain half of them back on a long rest. Half of them rounded down. And, uh, so yeah, you basically everyone's recovered all of their equipment. Uh, none of you had any rations or anything else like that. Um, basically, your, when you guys were incarcerated, um, they told you that all of your, any, any perishable goods that, that could be donated would be donated. Local shelters and that sort of thing. Look at these philanthropists. Um, yeah, right. So I get half of what I rolled. No, no, no. Oh, you get you get your full hit points plus you add your constitution to that and you add that to your health, and that's, that's you get... how much you regain. Okay, so you I got I rolled roll. two and I got seven back. And then do you get them all back when you do a long rest? You get half of them back, rounded down. Okay. Well, sorry, half rounded up, say. That's that's the more makes more sense way to do it. Yeah, I don't know what's up with you guys. I didn't lose any HP. I mean... <laughs> yeah, I mean you and uh, you and Hank just kind of were just invincible like that that whole uh, whole time. Anyway, still meanwhile, like, him and Guy's fucking limping, like, holding his left fucking ribs so, <laughs> just a little bit, just like, oof. <laughs> so, you guys have had the benefit of, of your, your short rest and conversation that you guys want to have about moving forward, or where you want to go next. Um, I think Guardian had just stormed out, so he might be a little bit a ways away from you, maybe, maybe back a little bit towards Vivaldi's. Um, but I think the rest of you are all in the same general area. So, have that it. So Wait, I heard something say something to me. So I want to turn around and see what was speaking. Say that one more time, Guardian. Something had spoken to me, and I'm going to turn around and see who it is. There's nothing there. Do I notice him turning around like that? Uh, he's not too far away from you guys. You probably still see him down the hallway. Oh, so randomly, he just, he down. Just ra from your perspective, he just ran. He would have would have just randomly turned around, for and then looked maybe surprised that there was nothing there. Depending upon, I don't know how guardian you want to play. Yeah, basically, you turned around and there's nothing there. Can you put us on the town map? Uh, I can. Real benefit to this map right now. And on this map, you guys 
Where are we? Are we? You guys are pretty much there. Yeah, around, around the twenty area. But uh, back at Vivaldi's. Yeah, the, the, the Vivaldi's is, is where Vivaldi's. the yeah the X is Vivaldi's. This area right here is the Coliseum. Oh, what is this thing then? I thought right, right uh, here. That's the so that that's the Champions Arena. So that's okay. where they, the the Gladiators live. Yeah, I just because the scale. I know that the scale is much uh, longer than it actually shows. So I'm just kind of. Mm -hmm. So we're all still in the Coliseum. Yeah, pretty much. Except for Guardian, who's maybe halfway between Baldi's and the Coliseum. So with well, it guys. looks like we all got our supplies back. You guys want to go get some provisions for our upcoming journey? Sounds like a good idea. Does anyone know where we can get those? Uh, so I think I would. Yeah, you you would. There's there's only two places for shopping. One of them is near the area where you guys stayed last night, but that's more of like a general goods, day to day. -to -day uh, things that you might be able to find in Chult that every Chultian would, would be shopping for. Um, things like the fish market's there, um, any kind of meats, cheeses, that kind of stuff is all there. Rain catchers, insect repellent, all that sort of stuff is all there. And then there's the, the uh, there's a larger bazaar, um, which I have to find, I just had it in my, in my view here, one second. Do -do. There's a certain name for it, and I don't want to screw that up. <laughs> The Red Bazaar. That's the general goods? Is the Red no, Bazaar? No, the, the, uh, well, yeah, the, the Red Bazaar is the general goods. And the... Where the heck is it? Right? I think you screwed that up, right? I'm gonna go, uh, like, basically stand outside Vivaldi's and start drawing the Coliseum from there. Oh, it's like sketching it out in your, in your book? Yeah. Um, the, oh, sorry. Yeah, and then the Grand Souk, S O U K, is Grand where the, the basically the famous market of Chult is. And you can, you're pretty sure that you could find whatever you wanted to, or if you couldn't find it, they would order it for you there. But it's more expensive. So that's, that's where the weapons would be, right? Like yeah, that would, be, those... that would be where you'd find arms, armaments, anything, anything else that is not a day to day thing that you need, you could find there. Well, uh, so I'm just gonna tell. Okay, where are they on the map, by the way? So I can just kind of. So oh, number six is the Grand Souk, and I'll ping that here in a second. You know, so I can actually see the map. Oops. Uh... I don't think we have numbers here. Oh, you don't have numbers? Okay. Well, I have numbers. Yes. <laughs> so this giant um... circusy tent-looking thing that I'm pinging that... right now—that's okay. the Grand Souk. So that's like the Grand Marketplace area. Are yep. the numbers on the GM okay. layer? Because they might—they might be on the GM layer. Um, it might be important. Might want to leave them there because there might be points of interest that we won't know about unless we. Uh... That's well. I I don't have to. Do, I can transfer certain ones at a time. But I mean, well, yeah, that's you guys why wanna, they're not visible by the. I would I would rather have you guys label it however you want to label it. And that way, it's. I. Can I put a over? label on it real fast? Yeah, yeah I am perfectly you can put okay text with you continuing want. to scribble all over the map. Yeah. To mark things. Although I would like to continue what I was doing in outlining and then use the text box to label places. How do you I spell have a big X over for all these. So I guess the, in in general, so there was only one map given to you of Port Zaro and only one map given to you of Chult. Um, so whoever has that, I would say, would be the the person you want to date as your map maker and or map tracker, and have that person tra uh, mark the maps as we go. Who has a high intelligence? Uh, high intelligence doesn't necessarily matter. I do. I have a um. Also, I have a map case. I, can I, I think that. it would make sense for Arch for uh, Lord Archibald Arch Lord? Archibald to have it. Okay. All right. And then the the Grand Bazaar or the Red Bazaar is where you guys were staying last night, which is down in this area yeah. where all the the tents are, are at. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn so because I'm walking basically like oh clutching my side a little bit, but I'm talking with uh, Twilight because he's right next to me, I guess, because I'm a group back there. Uh, we might want to split up some of the stuff we can get like provisions and general needs are down at the. Uh, Red Market, down where you guys stayed last night, and then some other harder to get gear, uh, goods. We're gonna have to go north, about half the city away from it, at the. Uh... What's that called again? The market. So it's the the Grand Souk, S O U K. So kind of like soup, only with a K at the end. The Grand Souk. Market. Grand okay. Souk. <laughs> and then um, the other one is the Red Bazaar. And where is that located? Red Bazaar is basically directly south of the Coliseum. 
Okay. So the Grand Circuit would also be where like we'd get healing potions as well, right? Anything else that is not a general good or something that would be generally used by the commoners of Chult would be found at the Grand Souk if you want okay. to find it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go ahead to the Grand Souk. Uh, anybody wants to come along can go ahead, but uh, we might want some people to go down and grab some actual provisions as well. Might also be is larger. Uh, the Grand Souk is much larger. I would yeah. like to go there. Yeah, I'm gonna have okay, to go the so that's Bakshi's with me. All right. Yeah, I'd go to the Grand Souk. Oh, do we have anybody who's gonna go get provisions? Um, uh, I mean, Orin maybe could. Gonna turn I'm, to I'm, Priest. I'm just gonna follow you guys. Also, Guardian is is is. Have you guys included him at this conversation? He's ahead of us right now. He's like he's a bit far away. I've just been t kind of talking to the group because I can't keep up with him right now. So I guess Guardian, where are you at? All of Probably this? huffing and puffing, still ste a little steamed. Yeah, fair enough. I'm trying to find a color that actually shows up in this map. Uh, pink and light green are kind of the two that really show up well. I don't know, the light green is kind of hard to fucking read on that, like, texture. The map's too colorful. You guys read that alright? Mm -hmm. yes. Try yellow. Yellow's worse than light green, dude. Oh yeah, it is, fuck. I wish I wish they, I wish that they could, yeah. I wish that there was a way to outline the, the text. Yeah, it's white, white, white and bar. black, yeah. Yeah, but there's, there's not. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna... Yell down to Turambar real quick, see if I can grab his attention. Turambar, hold up! I don't, I don't think I'm actually moving. I think I, uh... Oh, you stopped? Turned around when I heard a voice behind me. Oh. I'm gonna try and jog a little bit to catch up to you. And you, you remember that that voice said, right? I do, yes. Okay, perfect. I jog up to Turnbar and said, uh, we, uh, we're still gonna need a provision for our little adventure, so I guess everybody else here is heading up to the Grand Circle Market. That's where we can find most of the non-provision or non-survival sort of goods, but, uh, we still need somebody to go and grab food. Do you want to come with us to the Grand Circle Market, or do you want to go down to the, uh, Red Bazaar? Well, who's going to the Red Bazaar? Nobody right now, apparently. I need to go up there because I need to grab a new uh, pole arm after mine got up to, there. up to the Grand Sick Market. Sorry, I forget you're not from the city. So, so north is 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 up. I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. Because there's no elevation changes really. I know. That's just. That. <laughs> I literally thought it was the Grand S U K Market. I didn't see the S O. S O U K. Yeah. Yeah. Grand Sick. I mean, we might be able to find provisions up at the Grand Cirque Market as well, but they're going to be probably more expensive than the one at the Red Bazaar. So are you saying you'd want me to go to the Red Bazaar? If you're up for it. Yeah, I'm not telling you to do anything. You seem capable of doing whatever you want after you threw that fucking guy around. But, <laughs> um... Uh, we need somebody to grab food, probably. I'd be willing to give you some of my money as well, just to... You know, make sure you're not getting gypped. We're gonna be, I'm gonna be, you know, stocking up in potions as well. You'll be able to share some of mine. We might want to wait to buy all our provisions until after we leave, or we're about to leave. We'll have, we'll have buy a, ha good buy a pack horse or something to load it up with. What's your pack horse? Are, are there really? horses? Are here? there horses here? Oh yeah, you, you guys. I, you don't. You haven't. I mean, most of the animals you've seen here have been reptilian in nature. Uh, I haven't um, seen stone a pack lizard. <laughs> and metagaming, there are basically no mammals. Well, so the Red Bazaar. If you wanted to, if you were going to find a mammal in Chult, you would find it in the Grand Suite Market. So we can try to buy something, or we can try to buy a dino. Why don't we all just head to the Grand Souk Market, and afterward we can head to the Red Bazaar to get anything else we need? Mm -hmm. I might take, I might take would, a while. You would have enough time to do that, and to, to, to go to both places before you went to visit, um... Oh, would we have done? Yeah, you would have, you would have time enough to go to both of them before you would, before you would be... You wanted to meet back up with, uh, Syndra. Maybe but we should go to... do anything else if you encountered anyone or anything else. Looking at the map, how about we go to the Red Bazaar first, and then the Grand Souk Market on the way back to see Yeah, because it is closer. Yep. Okay. And the Red Bazaar is closer to us right now anyways. Yeah, definitely. Sounds good.
So, Karangar, you lived here for some time? Yeah, actually, we uh, came settled here after my old mercenary company uh, just bought a bar, essentially. Cinder was actually our last contact. That's how I'm kind of surprised she was there. I don't know. She was our, she was our last uh, client, sorry. Okay, that's quite a pretty sum. The, the dragon, or the dinosaur races, then? Uh, well, uh, not a fan of dinosaurs. So, so you have or haven't? Because if you have, I'm totally okay with that. I know I haven't. I I purposely okay. avoided seeing the dinosaurs for a while. Which is a feat in and of itself in Chult. Well, like like <laughs> any like I I just like I don't go to any of the spectacles with the dinosaurs. But okay. you basically are a dinosaur. Nah. Uh... How I'm a dragon. Did you say that to him? Yeah, did you actually Turnbard get fucking pissed at that? So, like, here's, yeah, here's... I wouldn't say that in character. That okay, so sense. here's for for things like that. Do it. From now on, because this was this is before you guys know, but from now on, if things like outbursts like that or things like that are supposed to be funny, I'm gonna assume that it's in character. And you guys probably should too, because that's the kind yeah. of stuff that that builds characters up. It builds it, it builds uh, moments of, of awesomeness. So, well, fine. If he won't say it, I, I will. <laughs> <laughs> but aren't, aren't you related to dinosaurs in some way? I'm, I'm just gonna like, I I don't I don't get mad at that sort of shit anymore. But uh, I, I, is to determine bar here that is he fuming right now a little bit? Uh, it, that's up to him. I don't it's, know, you it's, it's pretty obvious. I've seen very few inborn in my time traveling. Uh, so. be, be careful what you say around him. Very a lot of dragonborn, including me, are pretty proud of our lineage. So don't I mean, compare us to those beasts. Uh, definitely fair enough, would have I meant no offense. Out of character, definitely would have come across Dragonborn in the past. Yep. Like, just with the whole monastery and all yep. that. So. In fact, I'm uh, pretty sure that there's a Dragonborn in the monastery. That is just there. Ah, uh, okay. I haven't yeah, seen I know dinosaurs at least one. before, though. No. Honest confusion. <laughs> There has to be a Are, are dinosaurs one, not for... descended from dragons also then? Are they different? Nah, they're they're closer to lizards than dragons. Ah. Are there intelligent dinosaurs, like lizard men? Well, depends on intelligence, I guess. There some pack ones that are smarter. And some big old dumb ones as well, just like any mammal you'd see on the mainland. Well, I hear here on Cholt there are actual lizard men, not just dragonborn. Yeah, no, there are there are true there are true lizard men. I haven't seen. I right, I think I've seen one. I don't know that you would have. Uh, no, I'm gonna need to check my bio. No, I mean, he's ne there, never mind. There there might be rumors of lizard people because there definitely are rumors like that around Cholt, but I don't know that you'd have seen any in the city that you would be able to distinguish from a dragonborn. Yeah. Yeah, and my comment was entirely based on, like, hearsay rumors, kind of. Oh yeah, there's there's rumors, all, all kinds of random rumors like that around Cholt. So, have you been into the jungle already? Uh, uh lived here in Cholt for a while? Yeah, actually. You have? I, I have, yeah, actually, I have. What's it like out there? Uh, deadly as shit. <laughs> uh, there's a, there's a reason we stopped, we, there's a reason we set our roots down in a company. Or in, in a, in a small tavern. A lot of people died when we ran out there, and oof, it's not fun going back, I can tell you that. I'm assuming it's the same reason as why the entire city is walled in. Yep. Well, most of the city is walled in, but obviously it's expanding beyond. About three quarters of the city is walled in, yeah. But even that which isn't looks like it's got some, you know, the, the terrain is being used to its advantage where they can. Based on the map. Fucking garbage bit, though. Okay, so. <laughs> um, Professor Lord, could I see your map again? Sure. Yeah, get my map out. Thanks. As we walk, I'm gonna kind of mark down on my very crude maps, kind of the rough whereabouts of things, based on his. Ooh. Using pictures, of course, because I can't actually. Right words. Well, while he's doing that, I'll pull out my notebook and like show him my little reference drawings, and like point to them on the map and all. So you guys are doing this as you're walking, or are you doing this yeah. after? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm just kind of looking around. We might be a little clumsy. Yeah, sure. We're like tourists staring at maps on our cell phones while we try to cross roads. Yeah. My marking of Chort is basically like a little square with a dinosaur next to it because I can't actually surely write uh Nayan Zaru. <laughs> <laughs> I like I will just like point to where I wrote it down on the on the drawing so you can copy the, the runes. Oh, also I screwed up. Uh so north is towards the sea. On this map. Oh yeah, I was God gonna damn point it. that out to you yeah. last oh. week. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I just noticed that. So anyway, continue. The city maps rooted. Mm. Okay, so I guess we're just heading to the Red Bazaar. Alright, so get there, what do you do? There's all kinds of, uh, uh, there's, there's stalls for basically anything you could you could think of that would be a common need or common necessity. There's preserved fish that could serve as rations. Um, there's a stand that's basically specializing in various forms of insect repellent. Uh, there's a tent that's 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 selling rain catchers. There's a there's a guy that's chanting about how how uh, reliable and, and durable his, his specific brand of rain catchers are. Um, yeah. So anywhere you want to go, in fact, there's a guy selling canoes down the way too. Is there anyone selling small dinosaurs? No, not here. Okay. Does the does the insect repelling guy have anything to deal with beetles? Uh, if you asked him about beetles, he might be able to tell you something. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go off and uh, find some like get some of that dried fish provisions. Like, how long would that last, by the way? Uh, so the dried and salted fish would be would would be a preserve. So you could it would last probably longer than you'll be on shelf. Okay. It's 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 more of like a dried. Uh, it's dried and salted, so it's it's definitely well preserved. It's wrapped in sort of a, a wax paper. I I go I go to or like talk to the guy, and I'm gonna like uh because it would just how much would a single ration of uh, fish cost? I guess. Uh, one that was so to last you one day, five silver pieces. Five silver pieces. For one day, per okay. person. And because I have ventured out, do I know how, kind of how long it would take for us to get to the camp vengeance? I know it would take a while, probably. It takes, you, it takes you about a day to travel uh, 10 okay. miles through the jungle. If you were in a canoe, you might be able to, to get to double that. But you're just restricted to waterways, basically. And we have six people in the party. And I don't yeah, know that's, 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 available that's also going at a, at a normal, average speed, too. Not, not, like, if you're yep. going slow or going fast, that might change. But... Do we have a scale for the world map? Yeah, uh, it was like jump? one hex is ten miles. Yeah, and it's like is about like twenty thirty hexes to. So we're talking about like a month of travel. So is I... it possible to um, put both maps in the player journal that we can look at? Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a version of it that's kind of it's worse because you can't zoom in on it very well. But I'll, I'll give it to you guys. Cool. So we're gonna need a lot of fucking provisions. So it's gonna then. take like over yeah. a week to get out there. It's gonna take probably a month to get out there. It's it's like a month. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I think we should get pack animals. We better make sure that's the right direction we want to go. I then. think I think we need to get. Where like, you, where, where are you guys planning on going? <laughs> like where are you planning on going at this point? I'm I'm um, pretty discussion. Vile on is it. convinced that we're going to Camp Vengeance. Or I thought that's where we're supposed to go. That's the lead she gave us is Camp Vengeance. Yeah, she told well, she us that that would have the most that, that information the for us. That she knew about that they might know more because they've been out there doing things. Yeah. But you haven't heard yeah. any other rumors or like there's no specifics or any details on anything else that you've heard. And she did also suggest looking for a guide at some point as well, in case yeah. you missed that tidbit. I, a guide might also come with a pack animal of his own. Never knew. I'm gonna say to Vile. The worm hears little, but the bird hears much. It might be a good idea to ask around a bit more before we venture out to one of these places. Uh, yeah, but I just want to—I want to make sure that we don't run out. You know, gotta secure this stuff relatively quickly. But that is like a month's worth—a month of travel into the jungle. If we want to make sure it's the correct location first. Uh, go ask around. I, I mean, I got—I'm I, gonna have some contacts that I'm gonna have to run down and talk to today, so we may have to stay here for uh, a couple of extra days. Um, we might be able to fight, figure out something. I don't know. I'm gonna buy uh, also two days, does, two days does, rations of the fish. Okay. So that's also, ten silver. That's uh, one gold basically. Yeah. I'm gonna tap the twilight. Does does your tree friend eat fish? 
Nope, he just kind of eats whatever is in the soil and the sunlight. So we don't have to buy rations for him? No, he, nope. he's fine. Okay, cool. I buy the same thing. Okay. I'm just gonna buy, uh, buy ten rations worth of the fish. So that's, uh, five gold? Ten rations, five gold, yep. There's no health potions or anything down here, right? No. You 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 would struggle to find anything magical of origin or nature here. Yeah, it's just all mundane shit. I wanna. Uh, I guess the merchants. Do any of the merchants look like they're kind of tougher? Like they may have been out in the jungle at all, or do they all look no. like city folk? These people basically have rarely go outside the walls, as far as you can tell. Like they okay. they are perfectly happy to stay here and 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 be here and and peddle their their wares. I want to go up to the guy who's selling the insect repellent. Okay. Hi there. What is what is the insect repellent or exactly? Oh well, we got all kinds of bugs here in Chult. Uh, there's, yes, you, you see, there's the uh, there's these there's these gnats that they live out there, and um, if they if they they get you and they get under your skin, they shriek, and that's kind of a nasty nasty business. They they like to lay their eggs in in there. Um, this, 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 this insect repellent guaranteed to prevent those guys from bugging you. Um, we got this incense here. It, it'll, uh, prevent, uh, keep them away for about eight hours. It's real strong stuff. And then, uh, I've got this salve, which you can be your skin. And, uh, about, you can probably get ready without 20 days worth of this stuff, and it'll last for the whole day, whole 24 hours. And it's waterproof, too. You won't get that everywhere here. Is this something we need inside the city also, or would it just be out in the jungle? I, I'm pretty new here. Oh well, you see, if, if you're if you're talking about going out in the jungle, uh, I mean, it's it, you can, you can, you're gonna want this stuff definitely if you go out in the jungle. In the city here, I mean, I I, I suggest you always be prepared and, and apply it anyway. Would that salve work with my fur, or would that get all matted? <laughs> Well, I've I've seen various folks like you around here, and they they seem to prefer the incense. How much would uh, the incense cost? Oh, well, for for one of the one of one jar of incense or one one stick of incense here, it'll be about a silver piece. And that lasts how long? Uh, eight 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 whole hours, whole time, eight hours, all the way out there. Best okay, best thank you'll you. find here. All right, thank you. I might come back later then. Would Hank sure, be I, sure I can't have you. Just, I mean, if you buy it now, I'll give you a deal. Oh, what kind of deal? Well, uh, we we'll we'll go special. If you buy two, you get the third free. Today only, right now. So it'd be, uh, is that eight silver for the incense? It's one silver per One incense. silver for the, per incense? Per. And it lasts eight hours? Eight hours. 20 foot radius. Okay, very well then. I will I will get nine. Nine? Oh. Yeah, so Big I guess I'm paying for six. Yep. As I kinda count on my fingers. Mm-hmm. Alright, so I hand him I hand him uh, six nap, right? silver after taking a while to count it out. Yep. He thanks you kindly for your business and says to come back anytime. Alright. And that'll last me three days basically, right? Well, no, it's it's eight hours per. Minimum. If you light them one after the other. I mean, yeah. Then... So I'm, if I'm nine in them, it'll last three days continuously. Yep. Are there any cartographer uh, tents nearby? Cartographer? Yeah. You would not imagine anyone in, that's buying things in this area would be necessarily concerned about map making. Okay. You might be able to find like some paper and ink or that sort of thing for general business needs, but not anything specifically for map making. Would I know if there's a cartographer somewhere in the city? Or somebody who's interested in buying maps, I guess, would be a better way to put it. Interested in buying maps? Oh, for sure. There's this guy named Jobel. Jobel? Yeah, he's he really wants to buy your map. Any maps that you have, any information you have, he's basically the information broker. And he also, uh... You would probably know that if you wanted to go out and, and get into the jungle, he would be the guy that would you'd have to talk to you to, to figure out what guides are available. Okay. Jobel. Where, where is he? Jobel. Do I know about where he's located? He has a merchant prince. Oh. 
and you would have to either seek an audience at the uh, there's a name for it. One second. Find the location. Sorry. The Golden Throne. The Golden Throne? Yeah, well, it's it's called the Golden Throne. It's basically this large palace where the merchant princes conduct their their day to day affairs. And Got there's, it. There's generally and Jobal long... is spelled J O B A L. J O. I think it's J O B A L. One second. B A L. Be... Okay. It might be. Yeah, J O B A L. Yep. Okay, and I know that he has a, that he really wants maps, right? He wants any information you have about anything in Chult. Okay, I'm gonna wave down. Maps. I'm gonna wave so uh. Because Archibald has a map chain case, I'm gonna wave down Archibald real quick. And uh, say, are you? Can you make maps? I know you have a map case. I don't know if that means you can actually make them or not. Well, um, nope, nope. no one has any proficiencies in map making that I'm aware of in this party. No, no, I, no. I, I keep my case for uh, just general. Anything I might write down and I want to keep safe, I put in my case. So. No, I don't uh, have experience darn. drawing maps. I have maps in my notebook and like scraps of actual maps stuck in there and stuff, but nothing like no cartography ability. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Also, I'm imagining your notebook be like a full size textbook, but to you, it's like a notebook. <laughs> yeah, like I have the big satchel and like I'm, the notebook fills the whole thing. Like, it's a big if you were to hold normal. it up to your chest, it would be like the size of your torso. Yep. Okay, so is there any other business you guys want to conduct in the Red Bazaar? Um, can I buy one more water skin? A second water skin? Yeah, because it's lost for one day, right? Well, well, you will, not quite. It's well, it's four. It's four quarts of water per water skin. So a gallon. So is that two days worth? Uh, no, four quarts is is not. How big are the rain catchers? Rain catchers. You want to talk to a merchant and ask about it? No, I just want to see like how big are the rain catchers because it might be better to just carry a rain catcher around so you can just refill water. Instead it might of, be uh... a better idea to just carry a rain catcher around anyway. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the rain catcher is a simple contraption. Uh, it basically, it, it lo it's basically a five foot square leather tarp. Um, okay, you, so... could, you could string out with a wooden frame and legs. So we can and carry it, it, it collapses though. down so you can carry it easily. Yeah, I'm gonna walk um, up. I'm gonna walk up. Can... If you, you'd estimate, you could probably carry two gallons of water in it if it was when it, after it's been stretched. Okay. I mean, we have water skins as well, so we just go and put it down. Oh, I actually have to buy one because I didn't get one back. Um, sorry, yeah. sorry, it's maximum capacity. It's probably around eight gallons, not my bad. Two gallons per inch of rainfall. I'm going to go and talk to him. How much for uh, one of these fine quality rain catchers? Super high quality. I'll sell it to you. Discounted today, only one gold piece. One gold piece? Do you have any water skins to go along with it, you know, to fill it up with? Uh, we fill it water with, skins or the the next next uh if you go down the block here, a good okay. friend, he'll set you up with a water skin. I toss him a gold piece and I get myself a water catch. A rain catcher? Rain catch. Does it look like anyone around here is selling sit all or tarps? Um tents and general adventuring outside the walls, that sort of camping gear is probably not gonna be found here. Okay. Um but tarps, I mean the rain catcher is basically a tarp. Alright. How much are the water skins? Water skins are two silver pieces a piece. Two silver pieces a piece. I'm gonna buy two, one for myself, and since Twilight expressed interest in grabbing water skin, I'll just toss the other one to him. Yeah, I need to get one as well. Thank I you, don't Connor. actually have any way to carry water right now. Same here. Um, I'll buy two I'm... because I saw a vial buy two. <laughs> you said they're two, two silver a piece? I'll buy five. Perfect. Can we get some kind of discount for buying like ten water skins at once? <laughs> no, this person offered you no discounts. Damn. And unless you wanted to ask them specifically if you can get a deal on them, but. Well, that's yeah. Can. Roll, give me maybe can your charisma check and, and and make make sorry make me your argument for having a discount and then roll your charisma. Well, we're buying in bulk. I'm sure he'd like to get rid of ten water skins at once instead of, you know, selling one here and there. Make me a charisma roll. 
Oh yeah, he's, he's happy to give you. He's happy to give you a, a discount. Um, basically, you get them for half price. Everyone who just bought one. Yay! Nice, nice. And Violet, you bought mine for me. I bought you for you. Yeah, okay, I bought one for you. Um. All right, so I'm gonna walk back up to the group. I think we. I've got basic camping supplies now. We might need a little bit more if we're doing an actual expedition, but I think I'm good for now to head to the other market. Yeah, we're also gonna have to. I mean, we're, so we're talking to the uh, merchant prince again. Which one are we talking to tonight? Um, three? Or which Wait. one do we have the chance to? Because Cinder is setting something up, wasn't she? Wakanga Otama. Wakanga Otama, okay. Yeah. He he's, a good... he's, the, he's the merchant prince that's kind of in charge of more of the magical artifacts and items on functional. You would know that, the file. Right. And, the be and I also know, I guess I know that that's where the best way to get you to be able to talk to Jobel. Jobel is the guy you want to talk to if you're looking for information on Chult. He's also the guy that um, would would be able to place you. He he has the monopoly on all of the guides and out out and all of the um, expeditions that go into and out of the city are basically under Jobel's domain. Okay. Basically, I'm gonna tell them that like and, and on top of the merchant prince tonight, prince tonight, we're gonna have to meet with another one to find to get a guide. Might be able you to. Would, you would know that you would not be able to, without a prior appointment, meet with Jobel at his yeah. domicile. And you would also know that it would be quite a long line, a lot long wait to get to if he's in the Red Bazaar, or if he's in the. Uh, oh, what the heck is The called? Golden Throne. The Golden Throne. If he's there, it's going to be a long wait to get inside. It's usually a long line. You know, I'm, also, I'm hoping we can close at a certain point in time, too. Yeah, I, I, I got could help you with an appointment with this. Merchant. Yeah, I mean, I also know he has a good taste for information, so if we can promise him a, pri a piece of the uh, info cut when we get back, he might be tempted to help us out. He controls old guides, so if we if we don't want a guide, we don't have to meet him. But I'm pretty sure we want one. To get through you could be place. our guide, right? Been in the jungle. I yeah, I was in the jungle under one of the other guys, and he died. So. Yeah. You went 20 miles in the jungle and turned around. Is basically the expedition that you went on, Vile. Yeah, it was not that far out, and there's still a lot of. I mean, it's actually in my bio green. I'm just letting you know, so it's written down there. Okay. Um, out of character. What about Jeff? Jeff's not going. You haven't. You, well, you haven't talked to Jeff since you left him with Syndra. Yeah, exactly. Like we're gonna find out about Jeff tonight, so why don't we see how Jeff's doing? You want to suggest that to the party in character? Well, it kind of just didn't fit into the well, you're, conversation you're, and it, character. It, it really did, because you're just talking about guides and how you're going to frame your expedition into the jungle. Okay, well, why don't we wait until we speak to Syndra tonight and see how our friend Jeff is doing? Oh, yeah, and, we're going to uh, offer him to help us in our work. Oh, yeah, we're oh, going to. And the gladiator, too, from today. He said he'd be down to follow us. Yeah, but he's not a guide. Use... Well, he may be but we could always fight, use an extra person but... if there's all these dangers in the jungle. Extra person means but... extra food, extra noise. From what we've seen so far of how the locals feel about venturing outside of the walls, let alone outside of the city itself, that guy might be a tough gladiator, but that doesn't mean he's going to want to go out and fight the wilds. Yeah, well, we could ask him. Dinos. It's worth a shot, but... It yeah, might it be a hurt. very different job than he's okay. thinking of. So, um, are you guys heading to the Grand Souk, or are you guys going to do something else? I have yeah. a quick question. Yep. Uh, do we have all of our items on us, or did we leave them at the inn? Um, so you would have had everything that you took with you to Vivaldi's on you, and anything that you got from Vivaldi would also be on you. Okay. So I, unless unless you specifically wanted to leave something in the end, you could you could have left it there, but I don't know that anyone did. Yeah, no, I, I was stuff just... on me. Yeah, I have my small backpack which has all my stuff. I I forgot the order of uh, events a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was it was the you, you went to Vivaldi's after you went to the then you went to the market after you went to Vivaldi's. Uh, you could go to the Grand Souk, or you could do something else. I'm going to start uh, walking toward, or fo I'm going to follow Vio toward the Grand Souk market. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to start heading off because on the way I'm, I'm going to pocket my dulcimer. Yeah, that's where I'm going to go. 
Yep. So I guess we are allowed to walk around armed? Yep, there's no one seems to be stopping you. In fact, you, you would have noticed that there's various people that care. Like, the people in Chalt, they have, they're, they're very much, um, it, it's pretty much like an open carry, if you wanted to use that terminology. Yeah, it's Texas. <laughs> that's what I expected. It's, it's, they, like, there's people that are walking around with swords and daggers and all that kind of stuff, basically sitting out. Texan dinosaurs. Um, yeah, they've been, they, they've been rather open with the weaponry that they are carrying. Not necessarily all of them have armor or anything else like that. Some of them like are definitely just like a showpiece to to, to to give off a a position of I have this much wealth. Yeah, it's it's like wearing a, an ornamental saber or right, you know, like exactly. a like a straight sword or dueling sword. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not it's not out of the ordinary that you guys would be armed walking down the street here. Yeah, I just figured it might be worth asking because I am walking around with a six foot sword. That's made of wood. Yeah. And people have so, basically like, called a grad great carving and not necessarily thought of it was a weapon. The, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you are carrying. Don't worry, no one's impressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. We're, all right. like, we're all we're all decked out now, so it's yeah, literally we're all longer still than covered I am in tall. Sand. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna kinda jog towards Grand Circuit Market at a slightly quicker than normal pace. And you were, so you were, you were, uh, playing your dulcimer, Christ? Mm-hmm. As you are walking along? Okay. So, Can you uh, play your dulcimer while uh, walking? Yeah. It's like a, you've got a shoulder well. strap or something like that, but... Oh, Jesus, uh, that's a dulcimer, goddamn. Just like Google, what is dulcimer? Well, there's there's various forms. There's like no, a, a hill dulcimer, which is more of a handheld type. We thing. don't have to explain it to me. I can see it. Dulcimer. I can see them. I can see them. I'm uh like a mountain dulcimer. Yeah, it's not a it's not not one of the hammer dulcimers that you have to set up in like a xylophone. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Yeah. Uh, so on our way there, I'd like to talk with Lord and Orn. Okay. Uh. So I'll give you time for that in a second here, but, uh... Okay. Christ, you, uh, basically, as you're playing your dulcimer raps at mine, you stumble into, um, this, this, uh, this fellow. <laughs> He's dressed very fancily, um, obviously too warmly for the current climate. Uh, sort of sweating and huffing his way up the street. Um, let's see here. Yep. Forgot his race. I should probably have that race. Of me. It's a book merchant, isn't it? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Do. Yep. So it's a it's a human, but he's he's very, he's a very odd fellow, and it would definitely capture your interest. So I like literally walk into him. Basically, bump into him, and he turns around, kind of sees that you're you're not necessarily a normal humanoid, and kind of takes a step back, and then goes nods and. And goes, ah, a Khajiit. Not a Khajiit. Fuck, what's it? DM loses a level. <laughs> and he uh, makes, a, makes a quick note in his notebook, and he spins back around. Hello, good sir. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's no problem. You, 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 uh, you, you native to Chol? No, I'm not. I am just visiting for the first time. Ah, well, good sir. Uh, do you do you happen to have any interest in uh, some of the curiosities here on Chult? Say monsters and uh, dinosaurs. Oh yes, absolutely. I've been looking ah, for good. information on dinosaurs the entire time. At well, this point I'll walk up and say hello. He, he takes a back, looks back to down to his notebook, scrolls down. Uh, Briant! Wow! I have not seen one of you before. Make some notes. This is my companion, Orn. Oh, well, hello there. Not many have seen my people. Ah, but at least one has, because otherwise I would not know of you. And then, uh, he, he, he turns back to his, his new tabaxi friend. Um, so how long, how long have you guys been here? Uh, a bit over... What, like a month and a half or so? Month ah, and a half. So... Wait, I mean, out of character, have been here. We were in jail for what half a month. 
we were in jail, jail for, for 60 days. Oh, no, you we, guys were in jail for 30 days. We didn't finish this. No, we were in jail for days just of a 90 day sentence. 30 days. Oh, yeah, and we were only in jail we were only here for like a few, days, before a few that. days a week before that. Yep. We've been here about a month or so. Ah, so have you seen the dinosaur races? I hear there's one two days from now. No, I haven't yet. Unfortunately, I tried to get a look at them before, and we, uh, weren't, weren't able to. We found out that the locals have certain areas where you're not supposed to wander to see the dinosaurs. Fascinating, fascinating. Well, I'll tell you right now that, I got uh, some good drawings, though. I have, I have in my possession a book that that you won't have to go and sketch anything, all the pictures and all the information you want about any anything you find on Chult, it's right here in this book. Oh, oh yeah, he holds up he holds up a book and uh the book is it's basically uh, Bolo's guide to everything. It's exactly the book title. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, Bolo's guide to monsters, not everything. So Vandahar's guide to everything. And he said, for the special price, today only, 50 gold pieces, I'd be willing to sell you this book. That is quite a hefty fee for a book. Uh, and I would know I am a defender of knowledge. May I take a, look, take a look at it? And I kind of hold out my hand. He uh, lets you peruse through it. Okay, I was and ask it the doesn't same, list off does it... all the dinosaurs and everything. It plus you do not know. You can't read. I mean, well, pictures. pictures. <laughs> you would you would see pictures of all kinds of creatures. Okay. Yeah, I'd want to like look over his shoulder. Is he looking through? What do I notice? Does it actually uh, have relevant info? Oh yeah, it has. You, you, there's uh, there's all kinds of information about any kind of like kobolds are in here. They're very well labeled. They have a large section on kobolds. There's all kinds of lizard folk. Um, Tabaxi have a huge entry. Um, there's all kinds of dinosaurs in here. There's entry on Brontosaurus, Stegosaurus. Um, or the kinds that can jump out at you. Um, there's these crazy things called uh, uh, goliaths that you've seen. They're huge uh, frost giants. Um, all kinds of giants, hill giants. Something called a, oh. a neotheid, which looks like a giant worm. This is fascinating. I'm going to look through my coin purse and then... Um, well, well, oh, the I... Price. I don't seem to have fifth old, um, but you seem like a person who enjoys learning about new things and stories. Perhaps I could give you 35 gold for it, um, and tonight in, what is it called, uh, Kaya's Repose, I could give you uh, stories of my adventures and travels. Uh, so 35 gold is a bit of an insult for a book of this much knowledge. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'd be willing to part with it for maybe a little bit less, but not not, not much. Uh, could you tell me a bit more about these stories? Maybe give me some hints about what they're about? Well, I, I have I have quite a bit of information about the Tabaxi people and their and their their stories. Um, are these the Tabaxi of Cholt, though, or Mazdaka? Mazdaka and Cholt. Oh, wonderful. So you have heard of us. Um, I'm from Waterdeep, and I've traveled across uh, many places on the Sword Coast, um, including... There's Baldur's Gate, um, up into the mountains. Uh, I've seen lots of different things on my adventures. Um, and I'd be happy to share those with you. Um, give you some good tales tonight. Uh, make me a charisma roll. Alright. Is this persuasion? Uh, yeah. He holds firm in his price of 50 gold, and he, oh my gosh. That he, he believes <laughs> firmly that he has most of the information that you'd be telling about, talking about in your stories. Did you just roll a 1? He did. I think I did. <laughs> yeah, no, he's right, holding his enough. price firm at 50. Um, Orn, do you have any bit of extra gold? I do, if uh, actually worth purchasing this information. Oh, yes, where you see would... all the stores inside of it? <laughs> where would you happen to be from, sir? My name is Orn. I'm uh, from Waterdeep. I am Waterdeep. Uh, I, have, the I have traveled all over the place. Um, I'm trying to figure out where he's actually from. What was his name again? Bolothamp uh, Gedrum. B-O-L-O-T-H-M-P. Um, people just call him Bolo. So he introduces himself with his full name and then says, you can call me Bolo. 
And then his last name is G-E-D-D-A-R-M. Get arm. It's the... The Volo. The Volo. The famous Volo. Well, are we all around there? At this time? Uh, so Vile is probably up ahead of you. The rest of you I, I just remembered around. I'm actually a kind of much further up ahead of you because I was jogging and I still have long strider acting. Yeah, so you're, Vile's the only one not within your shot of this. Everyone else is, has, has been hearing this. I probably have stopped at this point to talk to this man. Yeah, I'd probably mention to you guys, well, we don't have a lot of money and we have quite a long trip to plan and pay for. I'm but not think sure of all the, the useful 50, this book would be. Fifty gold on a book, this moment. If we're going out into the jungle, we, we need to know about these different creatures. Well, and here's, look how here's, beautiful here's, the drawings are. Here's something else that I'd be willing to do for you. I've heard quite a few rumors, um, in my my time here in Chult, and uh, um, this at this point I want a charisma check from both Tree and. Er, this is a persuasion check, but don't. It's not. You guys actually persuading him. This is just kind of him looking you up and down. Yeah, what I was gonna ask him is ask him where he's from. Like, how did he? Uh, how has he learned so much about the area and animals? And uh, does he have a actual place of business? So I he's he's a he tells you that he's a traveling merchant and that he would prefer to. It's a long long story, and he would prefer to, to tell you over drinks at an inn. Versus out here in the street. Well, I'd love to take him up on that, but we are a little busy for the day. If you tell him where to meet you, he might meet you later. But we're staying at Kaya's Repose tonight. Um, if you stop by in the e uh, later this evening, we have something for dinner. But later this oh, evening, I'd love perfect. to talk with you. That's uh, that's my next stop on my book tour, actually. Uh, oh, perfect. Got a signing tonight. So, uh, oh, wonderful. I'll see you guys there. All right. And then, that we shall. I will, and then if, uh, I, if I could get that uh, charisma check from from Uber, because he was also he was about to share rumors with you. Because he had he'd talked that you guys are going to the jungle, and this would be a quick note of things that he would he had heard. Uber. Uber. Okay, so just straight charisma. Uh, give me a persuasion. Yeah. Oh, persuasion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Uh, give me three rolls of a D100. All right. So um, he he talks. He he. This is you have a map case on you. Um, he asks you to unfurl it quickly, and he can point out a few things in this map that might help you out. Um, so he talks about the uh, if you if you head up the Ricky River. About five days by canoe, you'll see a stone spire to the east. Uh, natives call that the Firefinger, and uh, people that they call Terror Folk tend to nest there. Uh, and if they spot you, you're in for a fight. So beware of that. Um, Could you repeat that one more time? It's the Turiki River, five days east. T-I-R-Y-K-I, Turiki River, about five days by canoe, you would head up the Turiki River. Um, you'll see a stone spire to the east. And the natives call it the Firefinger. And he knows of, of a... The, the natives talk about it quite often. Uh, terror folk are, are something that they that they say nest there. And if they spot you, you're probably in for a fight. Okay. Um, hmm. And then some city folk respecting the arrival of Halu, Hal, Halruan uh, airship called the Star Goddess. Uh, it never arrived, and they think it crashed somewhere in the jungle. That's out there somewhere. An airship, you say? An airship. Hmm. A ship that traveled through the air. How does that work? I I do not know myself, but it would be quite a spectacle to see one. And then and that, uh, it crashed in the jungle somewhere. An airship. It yes. crashed somewhere in the jungle. Uh, and deep in the heart of the jungle is a city built by minotaurs. It is now overrun by these snake or lizard people. Uh, but even worse things dwell below. Um, and in, in some of these, the folks here in the Anzaru I've talked to have talked, have seen, had strange visions 
of devils screaming in the dark. And then I look around and I say, see, there are rumors of lizard people. And then I realize that Karambar is not actually there. <laughs> Karangar. <laughs> it's like, so, oh, I guess he wandered off. And then he, uh, after he gives you this information and he kind of marks a few things in your map, then he, he, uh, says he'll, he'll see you guys tonight and he goes on his way. Oh. Okay, I was going to see if I could still buy the book. Oh, did you want to try to buy the book? Yeah, we'll, I was we'll going to. try to buy it later. Oh, are, are you sure, Orin? Look at how many beautiful drawings are in it, though. We could... I mean, I could pay for most of it if I just need a little bit of gold. As you say that, uh, Volo flips to a page that's got a very detailed drawing of a brontosaurus. It kind of holds it open on that page, smiling. I think we need to do our more important shopping first and then consider the book later. Though I do agree it would be an interesting read and potentially have valuable information. Uh, Mr. Voloser, will you please bring the book tonight? I, I may be able to purchase I'm, I mean, it then. I'm going, to a, I'm going to a book signing, so I, I'll have plenty of books there tonight. Wonderful. I right, we'll see you tonight, then. And uh, he takes his leave and continues on his way. And then, Guardian, you had a conversation you wanted to have as well. I wanted to talk with uh, Lord Edward. Okay. Because it seemed like they had some sort of connection previously with Syndra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was uh, wondering what that was. Well, you guys are free to share that information. Yeah, I'll, I'll let them know that. Uh, um, well, my my order, my wizardly order. Um, sent me here to uh, to investigate into the sickness, and um, we knew from contacts that Syndra was uh, someone who had information that would uh, help me in that search. A bit of a similar situation here. A mutual friend of ours who's a uh told us to look for her when we arrived in Cholt. Of yours and Lord's, or...? Well, I... Well, I'll, I'll, as you were pointing assume to that ours Christ. would clearly refer to Twilight and I. Okay. Okay, I produce a mysterious note that they found in the cart. Would you like me to Back share this note with them? What? Would you like me to share the note with them so they can see it too? Yes. Okay. Is this with me also? Don't share it with me, because I'm not there. <laughs> uh, I don't think it would matter for you, Christ, because you can't... Uh, <laughs> but I no, 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 it, it is all words. The symbol, I would still look at it so, as if so I could. The symbol you Uber. can see on it is the exact same symbol that was tattooed on the bottom of Steve's book. Uber, I don't think you realize uh, Christ's character was the one actually looking for Syndra, not me. Hmm. I can need to find this in your journal. The, the note has a picture on it? Yep. One, yes. Nope. We'll see it. Is it Steve's tattoo? It's the exact same image as it was Steve's tattoo. Yes. It's, it's, it, but it's kind of got a, a... So the symbol that was on Steve's foot is just the symbol in the middle of the... Uh, of the deal. But the actual banner, the, the front note is... Should be displayed prominently when you, you open the note up. You, all, all you guys should be able to see it now. Yep. I feel like this was originally written for Steve. Where did you find this note? Uh, it's actually in one of the uh, carts that we were dumping garbage from into the pit. This is curious, and I feel like we should probably ask Syndra about it tonight. At the very bottom, you'll see that um, maintain a relationship with new persons of interest. I'm almost certain that was us. And I'm not yeah, certain. So it could either be Jeff or Steve. I'm not or certain. Or it could be Leslie. But I believe. 
this lost gauntlet is Jeff because Leslie is still with us here. So I don't believe that it would have been him who's the code name that we I don't know yet because he's working with Syndra as was Steve. And we're the secondary persons of interest, which leaves one less one person left. When it comes to be my turn, I'm going to stare at the note intently, as if I'm reading it. I don't and know then... what any of what any of this connects to, but maybe you have different information that you would be able to connect this with. I'm going to whisper to Orin and Sylvan. What does it say? If you want to read it out loud? You totally can. Uh, I'll just sum it up back to him and Sylvan. I guess. Can he not see it? He can see it, but he can't read it. Oh, yeah, then I'll just, I'll sum it up for him. Because I mean, I'm not going to bother reading the whole thing out loud. Okay. But this also means that there's someone who's watching Cinder as well. Yeah, there's someone else yeah. searching for information. So who were the caged, caged magpie and the lost gauntlet? I think, I think uh, Guardian was trying to imply that Caged Magpie was Steve. Yes. And Scott was Jeff. Yes. So that's what he thinks anyway. That is the only guess I can have right now, yeah. Hmm. Maybe Leeches was one of them involved. I don't know. We were sent here to find Syndra, but she only just arrived. And we've been here for over a month. You, you, you were not sent here to find Syndra. You were sent here for other reasons. You did not find out about Syndra until after you were in prison. What? Most fairly recently. We haven't... You need to go back and look at the, at the backstory stuff we had talked about, because that's... that's yeah, but what I'm rem remembering from the backstory is us distinctly discussing that we hadn't had any new information other, like in the past six months. So, you got a note in prison saying to find Syndra because the two people that you know of are sick. Yeah, previously before that we hadn't heard from the monastery in about six months. Right. But then we got the note uh, a couple days ago in prison. Okay, that part was not made clear, I guess, to me. Right, yeah, Whatever. so that, that's, that's the order of events there. Yep, so that makes sense then. So, presumably our folks knew she was coming here somehow well if she came here from Baldur's Gate she very well could have passed through there well then yeah I don't I don't know what to make of the uh, make of that note right now I think it's something to bring up with Syndra tonight anyway to the market Did you summarize the entire thing to me, or just a very brief summary? Or did you feel um, like you did out loud? I could go over it with you quietly while we're walking to the market. Well, you, okay. you would have, I guess, the, the full thing word for word could be written, re read to you if you Yeah, or, or, or someone could read it out loud and comment. Yep. Um, as soon as I hear the full thing, I'm going to say, Oh, I, I heard about the Shrieking Nats. The uh, merchant person at the bazaar sold me some insect repellent for that. And I pull out my incense. Well, he said this would keep them away. Hopefully we won't need it. Alright. Uh, on to the bazaar. Or on to the... Mitsuk. So, Val, you get there first. Yup, and I look <laughs> around. And they're not there, because I was moving in a jog- it's like, fucking god damn it, where did they, they go? They stopped to have a conversation, then they stopped to have another conversation, <laughs> and uh, then they're walking. So yeah, you get there well ahead of them. <sighs> uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go buy myself another glaze. Okay, 20 gold pieces. 20 gold pieces, okay. Jeez. 
my punish for being a smart ass. Um, then I'm gonna go find out how much health potions cost. Health potions? If you have to ask, you can't afford it. <laughs> In fact, uh, the, the gentleman at the booth is definitely that that style of, of person. That guy? What's a that Z guy? job? What's a what? What's a Z job? What do you mean Z job? Never mind. Very confused. You've never had a Z I've job tried. before? No, no I haven't. If so, you don't know, you can't afford um, it. Uh, a single a, a single potion of healing is uh is eighty gold pieces here. Oh, cool. that uh, is a non-negotiable price set by the merchant prince who's in charge of these things. Oh, uh, because they want yeah, that's fair. Can't means that this fucking on the bad side of the law again, so I'm not even gonna try and deal with that. Um, fuck. <laughs> I missed kind of part of what you said there, because you... Yeah, you wubbed out. Well, it's probably because I kept, uh, started moving in. Um, I'm just going to say, I'm not going to get on the bad side of the market. I'm not going to try and tempt them into a lower price, because fuck being on the bad side of the law again. You also, I mean, it's 80 gold pieces. Even if you got them half off, you can't afford it after you bite your glaive. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I'd, I'd have to go and do something else, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to, I guess, I'm, since uh, I'm waiting for people to show up, I'm going to look around the market. For anything that might catch my eye. Well, there's as, all kinds of stuff here that, that would catch your eye. That is useful for going out into the wilderness. Discount canoes. How expensive. One second, because I didn't have that pulled up when I said that. I'm like an idiot. A canoe uh, is 50 gold pieces. And it holds up to six medium creatures. Isn't Orn a large creature? No. Oh. So all of you guys... For the sake of just, rules... Just the party of you could fit in one canoe. I just thought of something great. I mm -hmm. probably would have recognized Volo's name in character. You definitely would have. I, I didn't he think is, of that at the time. He's but... a person of, of great renown. But, like, he's written so many books that I probably would have read them all. Minus that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll we can talk to him tonight about it. Yeah. I'm not trying to like retcon things now. Yeah, no, you probably share that with me, and I'll be like, you oh yeah. Read all of his other, like, they're they're more there's still a few fictional things that he's written, a few historical nonfiction things that he's written. Um, this is definitely one of his his newer and, and maybe more one of his, his more master masterful works. Um, just at a glance, you'd have realized this is a big. Yeah, piece. I very much want his book. If we're discussing Bolo on the way over, I'm just gonna say, we don't need the money for anything else, really. <laughs> We've got some supplies, and we'll probably get more money from other stuff. Think of how much knowledge is in that book. Knowledge is more valuable than food, today I learned. <laughs> I love how Christ's character is basically child. Yeah. Oh, boy. Alright. I mean, the Baxi don't care about money except for the normal, like, utility stuff you can get with it. So I don't have any need to collect money. Might and as well I'm spend the, it on an interesting the, item. I'm so. the sad old grandpa that follows him around and pats him <laughs> on the set on the head and says, No, you can't have that. <laughs> so, uh, also, Vile, if you were interested in cartography, there is definitely a, a chart, the map-making tent. Um, I don't have a price for that at ready, so give me a second and I'll find it for you. Can we take a look at the Wait, overall uh, map again? Yes. I, if we agree, if we don't have anybody in our, I thought we had uh, possibly two people in our party who could make maps, so well, since you, we don't... if you had the supplies, you could make it as you went, you just, you, you might not be able to do it at the same time as you're traveling, but, or have to slow down your pace to do it, but you could do it. Okay, if that's the case, then yeah, we'll investigate how much it would cost to get, like, map supplies then. Yep, one second, I gotta look it up here. I, it just means there we don't have proficiency when we do it, so... Ew. Okay, so on upon further review, it looks like we might get to Camp Vengeance in a week if we use a canoe. Yeah, we might want to get uh, a couple canoes. 
just we just need we'd want one or maybe two i don't know well, like we would need a second one if we're going to haul gear and stuff with us yeah if we're gonna haul gear if we're gonna get a guide we're gonna need at least two plus you know if one sinks at least all of us can fit in one i after you guys buy that book i'm not sure we're gonna have enough money to get all this shit <laughs> we had a combined... maybe we'll have to do stuff around the city then we could always steal some Excuse yeah. me? Gree might disagree with me, but I don't that was think out of we're character. paying full price for the book. I, I don't think that was out of character, excuse me. So, he, he, he did not want to budge from his 50 price after you had talked about that negotiation, because he thought his information was far too valuable, and he doesn't want it to start getting out that he would be willing to reduce his price for, for random uh, notes that he might already have. Yeah, but I'm going to buy him booze later, and then tell him about a secret magical forest under the ground. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Later. And hopefully that'll help. <laughs> and I will be setting the mood with my dulcimer. Including using minor illusion to add extra harmonic notes to it. Ooh, Very nice. I need by to the run way, downstairs for a moment. By the way, Gree, I need to make, uh, we talked about this, I need to make a constitution save for the point of exhaustion from not oh, sleeping oh, last yeah, night. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten. You, uh, make it, barely. Okay. <laughs> I've had sleep Are there any, um, this is a big, large indoor market, right? Uh, no, this, this is like, there's like a big, giant tent set up, and all, all the things that are inside of that tent are, and this, this tent covers a large area. Have we all made it to the tent now? Yeah, you're all inside there. You, I would, I would okay. have looked for uh, small dinosaurs, I guess, small pack dinosaurs, since fucking Tabaxi has an interest with him. Dinosaurs. <laughs> um, so there's, there's... <laughs> Dinosaurs and chult. Uh, there's a few varieties that are for sale in this tent. Um, and I will give you I'm gonna make a beeline toward those as soon as I see them. Yep. Uh, so. All right, so a Hadrosaurus is 100 gold pieces, an Ankylosaurus. Uh, isn't isn't a Hadrosaurus is 250 gold pieces, and a Triceratops is 500 gold pieces? Oh, so these are like big because a Hadrosaurus is like the duck build one, right? Mm -hmm. What's the um, Ankylosaurus. I can, I'll, I'll show you pictures of them here in a second if you want them, but it's only 100 gold pieces. We could actually get one. I have to go. You have to feed it though. Oh, it's the fucking armored one. Yeah, none of these is gonna be useful moving into the. Uh... Yep. So the the Dinocleus or the ninth di can't even pronounce this D D E I N O N Y C H U S. That's like a two-legged monster or two, two uh, walks on two legs. Uh, it looks it looks kind of like a raptor. Um. Well, that could be ridden. Um. The Hadrosaurus is a bit larger than that. Uh. It pretty much walks on two legs again, upright. Uh, the Ankylosaurus, it's that, you don't know what that looks like, I can explain it to you, and the Triceratops is also... I just looked at the, it, it's the one with the mace tail. Yeah, basically. What was the first one you said? Likes. Dinonychus? Dinonychus, yeah. Oh, so like a mini Velociraptor? Uh, or, no, no larger not, than so, Velociraptor. So, uh... Velociraptors in D&D probably aren't those Velociraptors from Jurassic Park. Yeah, real Velociraptors are like, a couple Turkeys. feet tall. So Dinonychus are like Think Jurassic Park ones. Size. Yeah, so Dino the, the Dinoc Dinoc that I, I can't pronounce it. But that it's it's uh the larger cousin of the Velociraptor. This would be something that you could ride, but it would be more like a horse style riding. Those are how much? Uh those are two hundred and fifty gold pieces. Okay, and the Hadrosaurus was a hundred, it's like the duck build one. Yep. Oh my god, dino shopping? Yeah, no, it's too expensive. We can't afford it. We'd have to feed the dino and ourselves. Oh boy, what kind of dinos are available? Hadrosaurus, <laughs> Hadrosaurus, and Anonychus, which is like a larger version of, of a Velociraptor, and then a Triceratops. Cool. And Upon the, seeing the, the dinosaurs. Oh, uh, also there's there's giant lizards that are in there, not dinosaurs. But they're, they're something else. Um, and those are also 100 gold pieces they're being sold for. There's a flying monkey in a cage next to them. Those are also 100 gold pieces. And then there's a 
a cage of, of flying snakes that are kind of fl fluttering around in, in basically like parrot style cages. Um, they have wings. They have wings. They are flying snakes. Flying snake. And uh, those are two hundred fifty gold pieces apiece. Damn. Maybe later. But <laughs> Maybe. I'm gonna like I would definitely be gonna... standing there like super interested in the flying snakes and drawing. The yeah, I'm gonna spend the next half hour animals. staring at the different dinosaurs and asking the shopkeepers about them and seeing if I can touch them if they let me. Yeah, pretty much the same. Like Twy and they, I are they, freaking out over pretty cool much, creatures. They're they're very. Uh... So this is more like like a a market where you go and sell like cows, beef, pigs, that sort of thing. Only this is the Portney and Zaro version of it. So they want to see money up front before they're willing to let you into the pens with the dinosaurs, and and talk more about them. They want to make sure that you're there to buy and not there to just waste their time. Okay, in that case, I'll just stare at them from as close as I can get. Do you eat these? Until ones? they tell me to go on. <laughs> um, he points Which ones to. Do they eat? So he points to the Triceratops and says that they, they have some pretty good haunches on them that, that they can that you you'd be able to cut up and eat. Um, I mean they, they say that they eat all kinds. Most people in Chult prefer fish versus dinosaur meat because it tends to be rougher and, and tougher. Is there anywhere around here I can get some prepared? Like uh, do they have like food red carts? Red Bazaar would have all of that stuff, yeah. Uh, I should ask where... then. <laughs> it's funny, it's Vile like... Vile <laughs> asked if I eat earlier. And I was totally gonna drop the I wanna try I wanna try eating dinos on everyone this session. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to eat, but I can. Hmm. Carnivorous tree. Is, um, is there anyone who sells uh, tents? That's why I fit in and show it's full of carnivorous uh, Yeah, it's good quality fine tents here too. Um, so the two person tent. Uh, I need to find out where that costs again. At some point, Hank is going to look for crossbow bolts as well. Yeah, bolts I can find faster. <laughs> I'm going to find that first. Uh, so, seeing, seeing Hank wander around, I'm going to go with him because I've seen that he has had trouble paying for shit in the past. Because he doesn't seem to understand it. <laughs> the value of money means much, yeah. I think. I imagine his plan of following... I should ask following... Hank for money for the book. <laughs> I imagine his plan of following Twy and I and trying to just, like, copy what I was doing... It didn't go very well when we basically became excited children running around. No, yep. at that point I was not just like absorbed. Bolts. I'm just like absorbed in drawing everything and writing stuff down. God damn it. Okay, so cartographer tools are 15 gold pieces. Um, okay, I will talk to the group before I buy that, because I'm almost out of money if I buy that. Um, Wait, uh, Vile, were you actually planning on learning cartography and making maps? Uh, well, um, I, I was planning on having somebody in the group making them so we could sell them. A two-person get... tent is two gold pieces. Perfect. Because I did consider, um, I talked to Gree about it, but I totally forget how it works. Um, I did consider whether or not I could get, like, a cartography kit and do that, but I thought so I couldn't. You yeah, don't so really did you say, to do that. yeah, did you say ten gold pieces for the tent? Two. Two. Two gold pieces. Oh, that's not bad. Do they sell bigger tents, the or just the... Uh, two-person tents are pretty much what they sell. Okay. I'm gonna ask the vendor, are tents needed if you're going out in the jungle? Because it's pretty warm out here in the evenings. It rains in the uh, jungle. I mean, they're, 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 good, they're good shelter for the rain. He responds. As though he's trying to sell you it. <laughs> like, Does obviously trying Lude to... Does Orn and the Dragonborns fit in there? Oh, uh, they're like... they, they, He looks at them and says, if you got a tent for them, they, they could fit in there. As in, as in, like, one of them could fit in one of the two person oh. tents. <laughs> he wants to sell you more tents. Yeah. I don't need a tent. Can I just, like, drape a, tent, a tarp over my arm? Like, hold my arm out while I'm, quote unquote, <laughs> sleeping? So, and... the, the tents they're selling you are basically a tarp. They're not fancy. So why not just buy a tarp and I will literally just drape it over my arm? Well, I'm, I'm trying to tell you that a tarp of that size is going to be exactly the same price. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then we could I'm all we like stitch a couple here. together and we could all uh, fit together. Twenty crossbow bolts file or sorry, uh Hank, Hank is one gold piece for twenty. So I'm with Hank right now when he's because I saw him wander off. I don't want to leave him alone. And five gold and look I, expectantly I, I, at them. I just and like they I, they hand you a, a pair of crossbow bolts equal to equivalent to what uh one gold piece or what, what five gold would buy you. 
bolts. It's 100 Jeez. bolts, that's pretty good. Yeah, 100 bolts. Jeez. So many kneecaps. My Pathfinder character literally has like 250 arrows on him right now. It's a little overkill. <laughs> the large lizard things, how big are those? Large lizards are probably a large sized creature. I need to double check that though. Oh, so it's like dinosaur sized, like a monitor lizard kind of thing? Komodo dragon? Uh, I if it's a large, it's right probably a like a crocodile. Um. One second, I'm gonna find There's no, like, the handout pseudo dragon this. sized pet dinosaur type things, right? No. Uh, the tri okay. Triceratops is probably the biggest one here. Oh, I mean, can't, any, can't any like, get small, actual really pseudo dragons here? No. They're not, oh, well, they're, they're not for sale here that you can see. Um, and also, if you're looking for mammals, there is definitely someone here who has some more mammalian looking things. Um, they tend to be a bit smaller animals. He does have a few dogs on hand. Um, but beyond that, I mean, he if you if you wanted to talk to him, he could probably give you more information about how to how you he go about ordering various mammals for you. There's no horses that you can see. Um, pretty much everyone on Shelf uses a dinosaur of some variety. Horses will probably have a bad time in this environment, anyways. Yeah, I'm convinced that if we're heading to Camp Vengeance, we should buy a couple canoes. Agreed. I I think we should worry more about. Um establishing ourselves here like see if we can make a little money here in the city before we wander out um i mean because it's going to cost all of our money combined just to get the bare necessities and i don't like the idea of leaving with just the bare necessities so as you as you're probably my about guys this, too uh one of some a random uh purveyor of, of goods kind of wanders by you um any basic comments to you that you know you guys could if you're looking to make some money I could I got some odds for you on the uh, dinosaur races in a few days. Oh great! Yeah, no. blows them off. I'm not the gambling type. I gamble on dice and that's it. Oh come on, it's it's free money. Not for your ass. I don't even attend the dinosaur races anyways. So he he kind of ignores the, the naysayers and probably start reading off odds. Um, which I have here. One second. So, uh, at this point, I'm gonna turn to Orn. I mean, if he says anything about the odds, I'll write them down. Oh yeah, uh, seven like, to one odds on Big Honker. To clear. Five to one on Ubatu's favorite. Three to, three to one odds on Banana Candy. Two to one odds on Bone Cruncher. One to one on uh, Grung Stomper. One to two odds on Scarback. One to three odds on Nasty Boy. One to five odds on Jungle Princess. And one to seven odds on Mountain Thunder. It's all about Grong Stomper. <laughs> Grong Stomper? <laughs> Grong, I don't know, one of them sound delicious. Grong Stomper. He, he, says, he reads them off just like that, one after the other. Succession. And he, then well, he, he, I'll think he about asks it. how much, how much do he can put you guys down for. I just blow them off. Yeah, same. I'll reconsider before the race. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna turn back to Orn, and if he's paying attention to me, and, t and tell him about, like, if we want to grab a map-making kit, so we can actually, we might be able to get some more money, um, by selling the maps off either to Jobel, or possibly the cartographer. Well, none of us are proficient in it, does that just affect the roles and... It, it means you don't get your proficiency bonus towards it. You don't get a plus two, right now. Yeah, so, but I so... can still use it if I buy a kit. You can still use it. I mean, you, okay. if you bought any kind of kit, you could use it. Proficiency and, and that sort of stuff matters for how you use it and how it can be used. How much is you a cartographer? Got that guidance scan trip too. Fifteen. You use. Did I say fifty? You said fifteen. Fifteen. That's what I said. I was gonna say fifty sounds like a lot. Fifteen, yeah. I think, is right. I'll, um, and I, I'll tell. I can I can throw in five for it. I like the idea and I'll gladly use it, but I don't want to buy one at the moment. Like I don't want to throw out fifteen for it. I'll look to anybody else if anybody else wants to go and five on it as well, and then we split the profits between the people who bought the fucking map kit. Yeah, I'll, nope. I'll throw in five gold, but for I don't know how much to help. Okay, so we can all just fifteen over four is three point seven five. So I'll just give. Thank I'll throw in five. six. Okay. Do you need more money for it? I offer like two gold. <laughs> If everybody's doing it, I'm just gonna, like, kinda... So everybody's putting three gold in, except for whoever's not. Turnbar not doing it right now? 
kind of absentmindedly looking about the stalls. Okay. Sorry, I'm yeah, lost in thought okay. because after yeah. my rage, I've started feeling bad about what I did. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we we're each paying three for the map, so that's for three between five people, and then the map one fifth of the map proceeds to go to each of us. That's the deal. So okay. I, just just before you finalize this, I want to make sure you guys are aware of what's in there. Um, so the cartographer tools just consists of a quill, ink, parchment, a pair of compasses, uh, calipers, and a ruler. But that's okay. what you're buying with 15 gold. And then yeah. wait, uh, Lord, don't you already have pens or inks and papers? Could we just buy the those fancy mathematics tools? Um, yes, but um, those are the cheap parts of the kit, anyway. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Like the compasses, the calipers, and the ruler are definitely way more expensive than the quill and the plank and parchment. Yeah. So it's only three gold between all of us. Like I don't uh, like that's. I'm also gonna. I'm also gonna mention since people have talked about. Um, people have talked about not having a lot of funds. So I said, yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, maybe after tonight, if we still get any extra cash from Syndra, I'm gonna go see if I can talk to some old contacts. Maybe get us a bit of work in the city before we head out. I would appreciate some work because I definitely. I I I don't care much for money, but we have something we need to get done, and the more funds we have, the better. Yeah. So Vile, we need to be very well equipped. You mm -hmm. you, you, you would know the best way to make money on Shalt is to go into the jungle. I know, but I have two contacts that might have jobs for me for some like and I. You would you would know that most of those would entail going into the jungle of some variety. Like, yeah, the they might. You would know that. I know, but they might be friends okay. still. I'm just letting you know. Well, we could have do multiple There's jobs at once on the same trip. On Schultz, for the type of work that you guys would be looking for, that would involve decent we may, pay. We might be able to get an yeah, advance. But, but getting an actual job, even if it requires us going into the jungle, we'd be going nearer to the city, and then going back to the city. So, like, okay, but we still have what is it that we need? We need food. We need transportation we need and tents. So we need if we have if we have the canoes, book. it'll take us. If we have canoes, it'll take us ten. If we have um, it'll take us about ten days probably to get to Vengeance. So we need sixty rations for the trip there. Sixty rations for the trip back. Oh, sorry, a hundred rations because we don't have to care about Orn. Um, so a hundred. Wow, nice wording. Yeah, I know, right? Wait, hey, you... if we don't have to feed Orn, why would the number of rations go up? Go down. It was a hundred. Oh, one twenty to one hundred. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, rations um, were two however, silver pieces, so that's, um... Rations were different than that, I think. Let me go double check what that was. Uh, out of character, uh, however, I don't require rations. Five I silver. require five a significant amount of fresh water. Yeah, five, we're in a river. river. If we take water, the river, yeah. Source? There's a river. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. be using canoes, probably. So the two canoes, that's a hundred gold right there. A hundred rations, so a hundred divided by two is fifty, so that's a hundred and fifty gold. For the two canoes and all the um, rations that we need. Do you so, guys need a guide? And we need a guide, which is pretty expensive. Yeah, I, I mean, we're going up the river, so maybe? I have a good survival check. I would say yes, I'm... even if we are going up the river. So you would know, while so, that the river has many tributaries that are easy to get lost on if you don't Okay, have so yeah, we'd want a guide. So that's 150 gold right there, plus whatever a guide costs. Would I know? We, I mean, we've got, this, we've this got enough. Meta, we have but a guide... six people. A guide all the way to 50. Camp Righteous is going to cost us a lot. Well, that's, yeah, that's not matter. It's just the, like, you, guys, you guys have no idea what guide costs on Shulk. No idea. Even even though it's probably we, expensive because no one wants hiring, to go to the jungle. Hiring a local guide for a day should be like five or ten gold. Probably looking at like three hundred ish gold. Possibly. Maybe Syndra has a guide for us. That's true. If Sindra doesn't have a, if well, Sindra yeah, has a guy for us. My intention was to ask Sindra tonight, which is what I said earlier as well. So, how much There's gold does everybody chest. have right now? Oh, we need tents also. Or we could use you we could use tents. I mean, you guys think you need tents? <laughs> you could go without. I I've, I've been out there before at least once. Well, you guys could leave right now if you wanted to. Yeah, well, I want. I want, a tent. I want tents. Yeah. Scrum, oh, stop. I already but Karangar, like how how bad is it without a tent? <laughs> All right. So, uh, is Wait, there anything Karangar, you guys wanted help. to look for at the bazaar? A tent Did he say a bed roll. A tent or not? So, uh, tent was, is two gold pieces. A bed roll I can look up real quick. Oh, 
Sorry, Gar, did you said you've been out before? Did you have a tent when you went? I'm trying to ask the I'm trying to ask Geekery if I would have had a tent because oh. I went out there with a full mercenary company. You guys company. would have been uh, equipped to go into some sort of field or combat scenario, so you would have had everything that a, that a military entourage would have had, which would have included tents. Tent, bent, rolls, yeah. Militia. Militia. It was, yep. it was a mercenary company, militia. Right, but um, it's basically effectively you you were a military troop for all intents and purposes. Only you got paid to do it. According to that merchant and the note, we'll also need bug repellent. Uh, um, did we need bug repellent when I was out there last time? Vile, we can't hear you. Can, I can tell you, Vile, that your group, of the people that made it back alive, half of them were sick with shit. And you are well aware that bugs were the cause of some of that. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna want bug repellent, we're gonna want lots of it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so, bedroll on GP. Is anyone else buying one? Or is Alta, I'm, gonna, this? <laughs> I'm gonna buy a bedroll, but not a tent. Uh, I mean, you can see a small one strapped to the outside of uh, Twilight's backpack. Yeah, I have one too. So Hank's just winging this. Well, I see what Vile pays for the tent, and hand it over the same amount for the bedroll. A bedroll. I just, yeah, <laughs> I spent it for the bedroll, not the tent. Yeah. So oh. you, you, and so the the they are very very. Um, honest in this area. There's not a whole lot of trickery that tries to go down. They want to make sure they maintain their reputations and also the fact that they are managed and operated by the various merchant princes. Um, they do not want to make a mistake that would cost them their, their very lucrative job in this area. They're very Walk honest and reputable. Test. They definitely try to try to upsell you on anything that you buy. So they, they're, very, they're very aggressive salespeople, but but you're saying the markets, at least in Fortnite and Zaru, are reliable and steady? This this particular market is. Well, yeah, I guess and the, this red, is the Red Bazaar the biggest, was also... This is probably the biggest market, literally, on Chult. Yeah. Oh, did we split in fact, the gold from the breaking about us. Uh, yeah, I'd just take off three from your gold, for the uh, if you haven't done that yet, for the map fills. And basically, you'll be getting one-fifth of whatever the map tools go, like, whatever we get with any of the maps. Oh yeah, should we say that I bought the cartography kit? Can I write that down? I spent my three gold already. Okay. Yeah, I spent mine yeah, too. I spent everyone's gold. done that, then do that. Yeah, go for it. Does anyone notice me staring at all the different dinosaurs and stuff? Does anyone come up to me and ask we me about can't, it? We can't afford them, bud. Maybe There's, later. I know, so the, 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 the salespeople have been trying to get you to cough up money to to give you more information and talk to you about and bring you on the tour of all of them. You are very, very much excited, probably, about the prospect of going up and touching or, or getting on top of one of the dinosaurs. Um, there's a few specialized, there's a few guys that have come up and talked to you about how some of these dinosaurs are racing dinosaurs and how they, if you train them the right way and felt them the right way, they could be very lucrative in the races. There's guys talking about how they could, the, 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 their, their specific dinosaurs over here could uh, pull so much weight and carry so much more than these other groups of dinosaurs. There's very competitive bidding going on. Um, basically, about the sounds behind you, it sounds almost like a stock market where they're bidding on the very various prices mm -hmm. of of meats and, and that sort of stuff that are coming off of, of uh, some of the triceratopses that are in a different one of the pens. Okay, I mean, no, so no I've one... learned the basic names and kind of general abilities of each of these dinosaurs. Yeah, the thing that you thought was a Triceratops Rex, everyone's been calling it a Triceratops for some reason. <laughs> I make a mental note of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm good. He's learning. He's so proud. <laughs> It's a Tyrannoceratops. Triceroteryx. Yeah. All right. So, are you guys heading on your way to? Yeah. Let's get the center. I'm gonna gather everybody up, make sure we're ready to move if they are, and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, getting to dusk now, right? Um, it's it's basically starting to become. Uh, the sun is definitely low in the horizon. One session equals one afternoon of shopping. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> we are teenage girls. Alright. Alright, I'm ready to go. So you guys gonna wander through the streets. It's been it's pretty uneventful. Um not much really happens on your way to the Merchant Prince's area. Um There's someone that is at the front door of the little cottage that uh Sundra was staying at. And they pretty much lead you directly to Wingaka's um, abode. Um, 
there's a few gladiators there that stop you and, and ask you what you're there for, what your intentions are, and that sort of thing. You you explain the situation. They realize that you are here for a meeting um, and that you are on their list of, of individuals that should be at this meeting. They they let you inside. Um, you see, you guys would, would see or would have seen on your way into the sitting room this darkness well if you if you go to the right spot on the map there's a one spot that's open you can kind of see but there's this it's this great it's just this huge mansion um oh, okay bottom left and it's it's got all kinds <laughs> of yeah sorry uh it's got all kinds of uh plunder and and uh and uh, very much signifies wealth. And sitting in the sitting room are Syndra, still wearing her silver mask, and uh, this merchant pr prince, uh, Wakanga Ota Otamu. Is this the same place we were at the first night? Nope. This is the actual palace. We were in a guest hospital. Yep. This is his actual house. Okay. And they're they're basically talking to each other, kind of hushed tones. You guys kind of walk in. Evening, Cinder. Ah, yes, Good friends. Evening. Friends, come in, sit down. This is this is a, a good friend of mine, Wakanga Otamu. Uh, he knows much about about the city. Um, any questions that you might have, he could probably answer. Uh. Otherwise, uh, we are at your disposal. What news have you? That was Jeff. Jeff, uh, he he's uh, doing well, much better. Um, I believe that he last last I spoke with him, he was looking to set up an expedition, um, go into the jungle with with uh, another friend of his. Uh, I think Leslie was also with him. Um, but I think they were they were planning to leave here in tomorrow. Tomorrow? Do you know where they're going? Uh, they didn't say. Funnily enough. Jeff is going mm -hmm. back into the jungle? Oh, he was really excited to get going back into there. Really? Well, yeah, after the, <laughs> after the our, my cleric uh, saw to, saw to his, his uh, mental block, he decided that he, that, uh, he belonged in the jungles of Chult. It seemed. Can I do very, an insight? Very adamant. Can I do an insight check just to see? Yep. How yeah. like yeah. good natured she's being, or if it's evil in any way. I actually believe her because I believe I'm understanding who Jeff is. Yeah. I so Twilight. <laughs> so Twilight, you you would you need to toggle uh, normal instead of disadvantage or advantage. That'll make your rolls easier for me to read. But ten, um, you basically would say you you could tell that she's she's being rather honest. And or and you definitely know that she's being honest and truthful with everything that she knows. She's not doesn't have anything that she's trying to hide. Except her face. Well, at that I say I knew I should have seen to seen to Jeff myself. I I would have loved to have spoken with him while he was whole. Well if you if you uh Hmm. They probably would be setting up to leave tomorrow. Uh, I'm trying to think of where they would be heading out from. And that she's she's thinking. Um, you guys want to do anything else or say anything for it? Um. So I'm gonna like look at so Wakanga Otamu. Mhm. Mm and like we're if we're going out there. We might need a guide. And unfortunately, the only person who can really you know give us one is of course Jobel, and we're not going to be able to get an audience with him without your help, so if we want to get this underway as soon as possible, we might need your help getting a guide through him. Uh, so I, I do not have any affairs with, with the guiding services. That is purely in Jobel's domain. Um, I know that there are a few guides that might be willing to offer their services at some sort of discount, but you might be have to help them out with something. Um, and also, uh, don't, don't, size. Tell, don't tell Jobel I told you this, but there might be a few other guides near uh, that, I, that I've heard of operating under the radar. 
or outside of his purview. You might any, be able to find as well. Any idea where we start looking for these? Uh, I would I would suspect that you'd want to go outside of Fort Nianzaro just a little ways and hit up Fort Beller, uh, Fort Bellerin. Bellerin. I think that's the name of it. Give me a second. Let me double check if I'm saying that correctly. Fort Bellerin and find the nearest tavern. Fort Belluarian. Sorry. No, Fort Belluarian is a fort. There's not a tavern in there. Hmm. It's a fort. B e l u a r i a n. I'm just. B e l u a r i a n. Yeah, nice. And it, it, it is. Um, it's on your map as well, on the map of players' map control. Yeah, it's uh northwest. To the north. We Wrong direction. What Jeff is up to. I mean, he's planning to go back in already. Yeah, he's as far as Cinder knows, she, he's planning to basically leave early tomorrow morning, and she would believe that he was camping out um, with his friend, Z, plural. Um, he was camping out... His friend, Z? Yeah, friends, so Le yes, Leslie more and than one. Friend, yeah. Leslie and Z? <laughs> and the other, and other friends, yep. Um, or basically somewhere in Mylar's throat. That sounds like an uncomfortable place to be. It's it's one of the places outside the city walls. It's somewhat of a little bit of a gorge. Um, it's probably one of the easiest places to access the going into the jungle directly, not traveling by water in, in any fashion. Markets, I'm assuming, are kind of closed because it's dark at this point, right? It, the sun's setting. You guys were basically at the markets, and they were doing last calls where you were there. Yeah, so it's unfortunate that we didn't get provisions so we could head out early in the morning. Um, you really want to head out to Dune, don't you? I don't want to go back to jail. Uh, Syndra looks at you oddly and says, Well, I have your, your release papers right here. Yeah, I know, we have to get a job done for you, and the more we wait, the higher... But we, don't, but we have no guys, idea where to go. You guys will want these. These are proof that you've been pardoned. Well, speaking of the law, Syndra Wakanga, uh, I was meaning to ask you, what are there any laws we should know about here in Fort Nanzaro? Oh, or in Chult as a whole? He, he would have given you the same explanation that you guys would have had during your trials. Um, okay. That, that the laws are basically decided by the Merchant Princes. Um, basically, Merchant Princes have a monopoly on everything. They decide... The very, if the law changes, they change it, and the judges on Chult are responsible for interpreting the laws that they make. Um, typical things that would be illegal are, are, are typical of anywhere you'd be. Um, yeah, so... With the exception of murder being legal as long as it's sanctioned. Yeah, and we are currently, like, out of character to file. We're currently in a room with one of those merchant princes. Like, speaking he's, of, he's the reason why we're even out of jail. Speaking of, uh, when you bring up the laws, uh, Gaku Otamu looks right at Karangar and says, So speaking of, um, there was some damaged property that I would like compensation for. <laughs> <laughs> what say you? Vile. <laughs> Sorry, I had a roommate was yelling at me, what? The Merchant Wait, what... Prince has directly addressed you and said that he wants to be compensated for damages. Yeah, when I have the money, I'll pay you. Right now, this expedition is kind of costly. Well, uh, I actually have a, have a problem that I happen to have need resolved, and I'm willing to waive the damage fee. How much uh, is the damage you... fee? <laughs> uh, he laughs at that, basically exactly like that. And he uh, says 50 gold pieces, flat-faced. <laughs> uh -huh. You have to give me an invoice for that. Anyway, what's this problem, though? So I'd be willing to waive that fee if you would uh, race my dinosaur for me in the races a few days from now. Okay, I would like to say I do have land vehicle proficiency. Would this count? I, I am visibly... I look excited like I <laughs> am visibly excited. <laughs> he, he specifically is looking at Vile and asking if he would be... Like, he what? He's offering you... No other You've information. Never seen an excited other than that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ask him one. I'm gonna like lean in and ask him very what type of dinosaur. And he says that he would have you would have, be able to choose from his his uh, his various uh, or his his uh, stables. Basically, your choice of dinosaur. 
Means we have I, to stay I'll, in go, this... I'll go over those with you when that becomes more relevant. But uh, we, so we have to stay in the city for two days now to do that. Yep. Look at so I look at Syndra. I was like, aren't you, <laughs> are you dying here? <laughs> uh, Things really... take time. I understand that, and you obviously damage this man's property. That is not my problem. My problem is is, is severe, and I'd prefer that you address my problem immediately. Um, but I I cannot control what you do. I feel like we can't address your problem until we make a little more money and gather more And I do supplies. realize that, that the, the, the expeditions in Chult have, can be quite expensive. I gave you money explicitly for the purposes of preparing for the expedition. I, I look back I, I'm aware, point. and we're making use of that. We're making use of those funds, but the cost is substantial to be well-equipped for look back at what, what we're of... undertaking. Look back at Wakanda. I've never been to a dinosaur race before. Do uh, do the racers get a part of the winning cut? No. No. In fact, you can tell he he explains to you that the entire purpose is that he 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 has um, placed a bet on the race on his on his his jockey who has become sick and can no longer race, and he needs a replacement so that he can have some hope of regaining those funds. I need Jesus to waive Christ. the fee for your damages if you race for him. Uh, Does he have you... to win? He would appreciate it greatly if he wins, but he just wants to <laughs> race and he'd be willing to waive the fee if he raced and, and uh... did, did the best he could. I'll speak up again. Would happily take his place. Not asking you, Twilight, this isn't your debt. Well, I happen to have two dinosaurs. Oh. Well, why not I have him? I'd enter in the race, and if you wanted to, I'd be willing to include you in that. Yes, I would love to do that. Well, excellent. I might be able to double my money yet. Perfect. I would love you, to see your dad. Well, so Rokonga knows tables. things, right? Rokonga knows things? Um, yeah. Uh, 50, 50 gold pieces and you do one small favor for me. <laughs> You're asking for favors. He, Just what? He, he angrily looks at you and says you're expecting a favor out of the man who's demanding damages from you? What kind of insanity is this? It's your money. I'll, I'll get you the 50 gold eventually, if, I, if not. Just no, small... no, 50 gold now, or you're racing in the races. And he waves your release papers in front of your face. Just race. I'll, t I'll stand up and I'll race, but you've, uh... Just be careful in the future. I'm just gonna like. He he snaps his fingers into two guards that are at the entryway are immediately standing next. I am to the... I'm just unfazed. I'm just I'm just like the posture does not change. Like I'm I'm you can tell that I've gotten visibly mad when he um put that forward. It's all race for you, but uh, I don't know. maybe it's time to cool off a little bit. <laughs> oh, says the man who the says the so, man who yes. fucking pile drive somebody I... this morning. Yeah, you're quite the hypocrite, aren't you, Turambar? Well, show me so, your stable. Uh, right? I can choose my own dinosaur and everything. not one of the most powerful men in this entire all right. continent. All right, all right, all right. Quiet, quiet. Uh, when Gawkin is mad and quiet, he's trying to get order back to the room. And he says, we, we, with that business settled, um, does firmly saying that no more talk should happen about that for now. Um... He, he, he moves on to, so you guys are planning, trying to plan an expedition uh, out into the jungles of Chalt to, to relieve the uh, the death curse that is, has blighted uh, Chalt. More um, or less, yes. Uh, so I've, I've heard maybe a few rumors that might help you out. Um, I can tell you more about the Order of the Gauntlet. Uh, I can I can tell you about some of some of the diseases that are more common here in Chult. Um, what what sort of information are you guys looking for? Just tell us about this Order of the Gauntlet. Order of the Gauntlet. Uh, well, they uh, <laughs> they're they're kind of a funny group. They they came here like they were going to conquer us with an army, um, but that that army went out into the jungle. Uh, very unprepared, very ill-equipped. Uh, they got overrun. Uh, they basically two people came back uh, from that expedition. Um, by the way, he names the two people, and none of them are Jeff. Um, 
and they they got reinforcements and they went out and <laughs> and the the idiots decide to go deeper into the jungle and build a new fortress out there. Can you believe that? Um, I mean, they they seem like they're barely hanging on at the at this point. Um, and there's there's a few emissaries from time to time that head up there, and there's resupply missions that come all the time up and down the rivers uh, in Chult. Um, so they're they're definitely definitely struggling up there. But uh, hey, more power to them for trying to rid out the rid, get get rid of the uh, undead blight in the jungles. Yeah, whereabouts are they? Uh, so I believe Syndra gave you a map, did she not? Yes. Yes, she did. If you, if you follow the river, uh, you'll you'll get to both their old encampment and their new encampment. Um, if you follow the river, they're both basically along the bank of that that river. Hmm. Okay. I believe they're already mar marked on the map. Yep. So uh, Camp Righteous was their first camp, and Camp Vengeance was their is their current fortress, if you can call it that. Do you know anything about uh, the order of the Cage Magpie? Or the caged magpie, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not familiar with that, uh, but that's I, I don't know. I mean, I, I knew someone that might have been named or referred to as caged magpie, but I don't know what that has to do with anything here. Hmm. Do I believe Wait, him? Can Can you repeat yourself, Greg? Yeah. So he doesn't. He does not. He's trying to impose on you that he may have heard someone by the name of Caged Magpie, but he does not know why that has any relevance to what you're talking about now. Oh, well, I have uh, uh, reason to believe that uh, the Caged Magpie, Magpie is uh, involved in something to do with the Order of the Gauntlet. Specifically the no, ones out Caged in the jungle. No, Caged Magpie wasn't in the Order. No, no, not in the Order, but is involved in some... Involved in some manner. Well, I, I don't, I don't know any details about that. Uh, last I heard, Ka Caged Magpie is no longer with us. Hmm. Do you know Caged Magpie's real name? Uh, no. He says it exactly like that. Do an inside oh, out, check. out of yeah, character. That's that's a very heavy Steve reference. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's not necessarily being truthful, and he's uncomfortable with with telling you guys more information about it. He seems out of character. I, I think you should just pull out the note and confront them with it. We're all gonna get arrested again, aren't we? <laughs> Why would they get us arrested? Hey, we need information, and they want us to get a job done. Have they so... have they given you a job besides the races? I don't think you said anything about that. Well, it's pretty much just been the race. Syndra. Syndra has a has has wants you to find out the cause of the curse. And that's why you're going yeah. to the jungle in the first place. That's that's what I mean by a job. Mm -hmm. But we need information, so... The mercenary group that runs the town, uh, what are they called again? Uh, so the mercenary group that's... The merchant princes tend to rely on more than Zentarum. And there's their symbol, the Zentarum. Zentarum, okay. And the yep. Order of the Gauntlet is the one that went out to the jungle, right? Yep. Wait, wait, is that, sorry, was it the... Okay. Oh, was it the Flaming Fist or the Order of the Gauntlet? Sorry, but... Order of the Gauntlets out in the jungle. Okay, okay, okay. The Flaming Fist, you would know, is in Fort Bellerin. Or Bellowarian. Oh, they are in Fort Bellerin? I thought they were in the, um... No, th so that, I messed that up last time. Fort Bellowarian is not in Port Ianzaro. Okay. So... If that's the case, then yeah, I definitely want to stop by at Port Bellowarian, or Fort, Fort Bellowarian, then. The Flaming Fist are in Fort Bellowarian? Bellowarian, yep. Okay. I'd like to ask you know, it would take, you, it would take you maybe two or three days to get there from here. Not, they're not. You don't have to go through the jungle necessarily, but you'd have to get a ferry across the uh, the bay and then be a few days hike along the, the coastline. Yeah, that sounds like a much better starting point than going to the place like 
a week and a half away. Yeah, I also. Well, what, what, what were you trying to? What would we you be trying to find it for, Bellowarian? You know, I don't know but just there. what I would be trying to find at the other place. For Bear Larry. We know yeah. that another group's there. Like, that's yeah, all I don't we really know. know. Other yeah, than maybe finding a guide there. Well, yeah, there you did get that information from Bola. There might be under undercover guides that are not necessarily under the control of Jobel. So you mentioned um, the undead problem in the jungle. Oh, <laughs> problem is a kind word for it. Could you give us any more information about this? Um, did it I start mean, at the same time as the curse? Oh no, we've had this problem forever. Yeah, I want to ask Simba Oh, Makoga, and this is unrelated uh, then. Do they know where the, the Enclave is? What Enclave? The Emerald Enclave. The Emerald Enclave is a group and they would know of it. Um, it's it's a group that exists pretty much anywhere in Faerun. Um, in fact, uh, if there's someone else that seems to bring that up that wants to talk about it, aka Hank. I'd assume they're anywhere. They move around quite a bit. Well, yeah, but do, I'm asking the locals if they know of any specific outpost. Um, uh, would the, I know? User you, you would channel. know that they are scattered and they move often in the jungle. Yeah, and I. They're, and recently... they, they are they are well camouflaged, and they're they're basically they're they're out to eradicate the undead or, or monitor the undead problem on Chult. They're also, uh, I mean that that's their primary interest, and they're also out to um, protect the the very uh, unique eco ecosystem of Chult as well. They're pretty much eco warriors. You want to label them in a particular way? That would be their main goal is to. Uh, to uh, maintain the balance of nature versus versus the elements of uh, that would that would be out to destroy that. And why are you asking about the enclave, by the way? Tree. I was just wondering if uh, you know, they could potentially be someone else we could get in contact with if we're trying to wander out there. Or if we need to look for a local who has some knowledge of the jungle. So, H, you would... Your channel. You were just left? It was Minerva. It was Minerva. Okay. She was uh, messaging me. Okay, so, Age, you, uh, you, you would maybe be able to figure out how to contact someone if you saw one of their... You'd be able to basically pick out their encampments if you came across them in the jungle. You also know that in Port Nianzaru itself, there is no Emerald Enclave um, central hub or place to actually get in contact with them. They are basically out in the jungle, and they're here for a very specific purpose. All right. So they'll find us, or if we get lucky, we'll stumble across them. There is no real way to contact them directly. And you, I mean, the last contacts you had with them to age would have would have been in the jungle somewhere. They would not be there anymore, likely. And you would know that. How do you know of the Enclave, Hank? Uh, I was once part of them. Oh. I was unaware. Yeah, turns out they don't exactly smile upon attacking people. But to be fair, he was a necromancer. That seems like the sort of thing that would, that would benefit them. It turns out you need more proof than I saw it. Does that mean you were actually lacking in evidence? Or... They were. Was it just the situation they denied the evidence? I killed him, then he showed up at my trial to throw me into jail. That's embarrassing. <laughs> On the plus side, it was no longer a murder charge. Well, at least if he's been resurrected, he's dying again. By the way, uh, slack-jawed staring at you as you're having this, this casual conversation about murder and shit is, is Wingaku Akamu just kind of staring there like, I have, I have never had this kind of company in my presence before, ever. <laughs> it's kinda, it's, I, I see his look and just kind of slap a little bit. Um, I'm going to kind of lean over and get his attention. Uh, so, Mr. Otamu, do you know how much does it cost to get a guide into the jungle? Uh, well, they, they tend to be sort of the 
the 30 gold up front uh, and five. I think the standard rate is 30 gold up front and five gold, uh, five gold per uh, per day after that. Okay. Uh, some the... of them, again, some of them might be willing to waive that for for half the the loot you guys discover on your travels or something. Half. They might have another another goal as well. They may be willing, willing to waive that fee for, but. As far as I know, that's the standard rate that 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 Joel sets for his guides to charge. And we need to get, or we can just find a guide from him, right? We don't have to have a meeting with Jobel. Uh, so Jobel would would be the person you want to talk to about all the guides that he has. I know that the the guides tend to put up flyers elsewhere though too. Some of the taverns have a few copies if you ask the front desk. Okay. And then what else can you tell us about the undead problem? But there's undead in addition to the dinosaurs and beasts in the jungle. <laughs> oh, there's undead dinosaurs and beasts in the jungle, including <laughs> including the normal living dinosaurs. Uh, I mean, I've heard stories of Trinosauruses that'll that'll vomit up corpses. They have to deal with everything. It's it's a mess. Oh wow. Have you heard of anything called um, one second called Terror Folk off the Tiriki River? Ah, uh, there's all kinds of rumors about Terror Folk. Um, Are those undead? No, they're not undead. They they look like birds. And he he describes that there's this this uh, this rumor on Schult, or there's this legend on Schult about the terror folk and why they call them terror folk. But um, effectively, it's 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 a large bird. Um, it stands maybe maybe eight eight foot tall. It looks kind of like a crane. And Did they, they, they seem to have they seem to have uh, some innate magic ability as well. I think. Let me let me double check that because I might be confusing that with something else. So, hang on. I may have just lied to you. Whatever that was they going are, off of memory as like I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, no, sorry. They they look like pterodactyls, but they're more humanoid than that. Does he describe what that looks like? Yeah. Are they intelligent? Yeah, they have intelligence. Uh, are they still magical, or is that the other thing? That's the other thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, my bad. <laughs> but they they tend to be very, very much keep to themselves. They don't like to... I mean, there's been little contact with them, and all the rumors that he knows of... Um, there was a good reason why they're called terror folk, and not by their normal name, which is the Patera. As in, like, pterodactyl. Because they have a, they have tend to have this nasty habit of swooping down in the sky and snatching up um, children and feeding them to their young. Neat. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Yeah, very, very terrifying. Or you might say. Are there any specific locations in the jungle to avoid, say on the way to, uh, is it Camp Victory? Oh, camp, camp Vengeance. Camp Vengeance. Yep. Um, I mean, there's, yeah. I, I would say avoid the jungle period, honestly. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of details. Some of our expeditions that are go out there for some of the mining camps, um, they come back with a lot of stories. And uh, basically due south of here is, is probably the worst of it. Which, That'd uh, be along the Tiriki River. Um, the Tiriki River itself, I haven't heard a whole lot of, of, of nasty rumors about. But if you try to venture too far from it, you might run into some some more trouble. Do we where? If you venture too far from the Tiriki River. Okay. And are the rivers generally a good way to travel? Uh, if we took a canoe or something, or are those pretty dangerous? To, if you're trying to travel deep into the jungle, that's probably the fastest way to get there. Um, but the, I mean, the rivers in Shalt are not any safer necessarily than the jungle, I would say, but... If you're trying to get there with any speed, which I would suggest you do, as Cinder only gets worse by the day, um, that's the way I would travel. And I've heard a lot about the insects here. Oh, there's plenty of insects. There's, there's insects bigger than you are that are here in Shalt. Are any certain types of repellent more useful, practical? 
Uh, pretty much the two varieties that you can find here that are more common, the incense, I believe, and there's a, there's a slab that you can apply to your skin. Um, the slab might be a bit more uncomfortable for you with your fur, but uh, otherwise you're, you're, you're probably uh, fine with incense. Okay, thank you. I mean, they'll, they'll, those won't protect you from any of the larger insects, but it'll keep all the smaller ones, carry all the diseases away from you. He says casually. Okay, I asked Syndra if uh, she can maybe elaborate on what sort of symptoms she's experiencing. At the when you say that, she removes her mask, revealing a uh, very pale white uh, elven female face. Mm -hmm. Um. Basically, you can see that all of the veins in her face have gone black, and her skin is starting to look more transparent than actual skin. Mm. Hank is visible. And then silently, yeah, silently, she puts her mask back on. Eyes go a little bit wider. Interesting. Very interesting. Does it feel painful? Very. So that's she. She would describe more of like an arthritic burning pain. That is that is constant and never present, on any, and especially near the lights where the, the veins have blackened. They're more trans, and they're, where her skin looks more transparent than not. And she would have a few scabs, and and on her face you'd be able to see a few scabs, and uh, um, where some of the skin looks like it was was peeling off. Interesting indeed. And about how long have you been experiencing these symptoms? The last, oh, I'd say 20 days. Gotten worse and worse every day. Indeed. Do you have any on in, any information on how long it may take? How long it may take to what? Kill you again? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I have no I have no idea. I couldn't tell you an exact day. But Sorry I, to be blunt for the question, but it would be beneficial to know if there were a well, more the, specific timeline we need to worry about. At the at the current rate of uh, the 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 I mean certainly they've they've not given me three months at the current rate of I'll be dead before three months is up, for sure. If the, a cure or, or some, some relief is not found. That is not very much time. And yet all we and, do and, is and, dawdle and here in the city. She made it, she wanted to make it very clear that she, that was not a specific deadline. That was a, I will be dead sometime before three months. And there is yeah. not really a, that, that, that is the best estimate that someone could give her from the clerics that she's talked to. And the only information you have for us is that there is some artifact somewhere in the jungle that is the cause of this. Called the Soulmonger, yes. But we have you have no idea where it might be. I do not. Are there any places in the jungle that perhaps have a higher concentration of undead? Or maybe newer beasts that have had stories popping up recently? Around the same time as the curse? Uh, nothing about the same time as the curse. The undead have always been ever present on Chult, and they always they seem to be, as as the map makers have, have been drawing the maps, the, the f more towards the center of the island you go, that that tends to be the, where the greater concentrations of undead are. Um, but there's not, there's, there's there's no. That's been here longer than the curse has. That's always been the case here on Chult. Still might be, you know, inflated in some way. You're very quiet, Lyle. Oh, it's fine. I would do the mumble anyways, I guess. I can't hear you. Blah! Heard that. Yep. What were you trying to say? They might still be related. Well, she... I mean, she certainly has no idea. Um, best best information that she would know in the direction that you'd want to head in for, for finding information was, would be to... Out any rumor that 
that that you would find interesting or that would have maybe reveal more about uh, the goings on of the jungle of Chult. And then well, continue continuing forward or journeying in, journeying into the jungle is probably your best bet to find out more information. I'm definitely gonna stop. I'm just gonna like turn to the group. I wanna. I need to stop by Fort Belarus and anyways. You need to check in on somebody there, Belarian. Isn't that the Bellarian. opposite direction? It is the opposite direction. Yes, it is. What do you need to do there, Karangar? As a friend, I need to talk to. Can they help us with this? Uh, Might be mission? able to. I don't know. Haven't talked to him in a while. I'm gonna nudge Orn and then Sylvan say. Ask about, uh, Steven. Well... Responding Steve. to... Responding to, uh, Twy. Well, there's... There's not much... To ask about him. Um... Like... The, the only thing we have to go on there is the note, and I don't have the note. And... Like... Yeah, I don't know. It's not my place okay, to so the note. I guess I probably wouldn't ask anything else then, because we didn't actually know him very well at all. So, because Steve is not a Sylvan word, um, Waigaku Otamu kind of perks up when you mention Steve, because you've also mentioned Magpie. Mm -hmm. So you would have noticed that as soon as you said Steve, or oh. Steve came out of your mouth, that he would have he would have sat upright a little bit more uncomfortably. Okay, so the Magpie is definitely Steve. As far as we can gather. Mm -hmm. Well, we have enough evidence to conclude that for now. Do I, I do I notice him uh, sitting up like that when I mentioned? Yes, yeah, I explicitly. Okay. Um, asking Sindra then instead of him, I'm gonna say. So there's another prisoner with us uh, by the name of Steve. Jeff knew him pretty well. Uh, do you know anything else about where he came from, or I mean, that might explain where Jeff is going? I know Jeff was really close to him. Well. He he traveled with Leslie quite a bit, um, but he was basically, as far as I knew, he was in and out of prison all the time. Then casually, I'm gonna look toward Wakonga. Wakonga, do you happen to know Steve at all? He says I know about as much as Sindra does, and he's looking very deliberate and straightforward, and and um, not trying to look at you necessarily. He's not making eye contact when he says it. Mm. What was what? he in and out of prison for? You would have talked to him in prison, right? You probably know more than I do. What if we have reason to believe that Steve is the caged magpie? And yes, that's in character. Yeah, yeah, I know. He he, kind of stares at you. Uh, like I don't. He doesn't know how you made that connection. Um. But he he doesn't say anything out loud at that. <laughs> he just gives me the cold stare. The, the 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 how the hell did you know that kind of kind of uh I don't know what to say to that <laughs> kind of stare, yeah. So just to go back, what uh what context was Cage Magpie brought up earlier in the conversation? It was just flat out asked about if Cage Magpie was something that, that he knew about. I think Karangar was asking that earlier. Oh, Lord was. Yeah. Oh, Lord, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. So what's Lord's reaction to me saying that? I just nod. Because, <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming you came to the same conclusion at this point. Yeah. I mean, I'm not really sure who this caged magpie fellow is, but the name's been brought up, and based on what I where, know of Steve where have you and heard what I've heard... Where have you heard this name? Ngaku is like saying this a little bit repeatedly under his breath. Where have you heard this name? 
I believe it was during the battle, right before Steve was killed, or well, right after Steve was killed. Who would have said it? I don't know. I've only heard the name once before now. But just the information around it leads me to ask that. This name was never spoken. And those who knew it would know not to speak it. Well, Where did you get this information from? Oh, so it's a secret name of some sort, like a secret society. How how would you name how would you know it wasn't spoken if you weren't there? Cuz I know who gave it to him. That man does not speak. So uh, are you eyes go eyes guy. Leslie. <laughs> he, he looks at you like how the fuck do you know this? Oh, so leeches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm just in my corner getting a kick out of fucking Orn beating the shit out of this guy, like, with his language, essentially, just figuring all this shit out. And like, I am like, loving this. Like, in character, like, I'm legitimately confused, like, I really don't know what's going on here, so I'm just trying to ask a question. I know. About five <laughs> seconds later, I exclaim, oh, Leslie, Leslie doesn't speak. <laughs> <laughs> His face goes a little bit whiter or paler. He's not really white, but paler. Leslie, that was the uh, that was leeches, right? Yeah, leeches. He's, oh, he's, shit, yeah. Yeah. he's a nice yeah. guy. He's a good guy. Yeah. Little cool. huh. yeah, So why was uh, why was Steve supposed to uh, watch out for the uh, for the guys in uh, Camp um, Vengeance? I mean, he, why, why he was wasn't he involved looking for anyone something? at Camp Vengeance. He was oh. in jail. He was monitoring Lost Gauntlet. Yeah, which I, I sure. <laughs> Again, so you like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> no, that so, was... So, I want to show him my was heel. Out of character to Lord's thing. Like, what yeah. Lord... But Uber wasn't saying that in character, right? Oh, he was saying that in character. I was saying that in character. Remember how we just said, assume oh, we were saying okay. that shit in character? <laughs> well, because nobody had actually brought up the... The note. Before no. that. No. No, we haven't so. yet. He's, that's why he's so confused. He's, that's why he's very confused and wondering how the hell you know all of this. Yeah. How is Syndra reacting to this? Syndra, he has a mask on. Mask. <laughs> he has a mask on, first of all, and he's not really made any other... You get the feeling that moving for her is painful, and she doesn't do it often if she can help it. Is she but looking sidelong at Wakanga, has... or like staring at us though? Does she look nervous? You can't see, like, the, the silver mask, the eye, there's not really, like, the eye slits in it are black. That, like, the only time you ever saw her face is when she took the mask off. Okay, but I mean, she'd have to look to the side if she was looking at Wakanga. Yeah, or and something. You, can, you get the feeling that her turning her head even, like, any kind of subtle movement okay. like that is, is painful. Okay, I want to ask Syndra a question. Go for it. Jeff didn't happen to have a shield when he was leaving, did he? Uh, no, he had, uh, Jeff has a couple tattoos, though. I produce my shield. I it have a gun. have a symbol like this on it. Uh, no, um, this was more of a, a hand clutching a sword. And I think it said never forget below it. What's the, uh, symbol on your shield, by the way? Guardian? Yeah. It is a gauntlet. <laughs> uh. Yeah, he had oh. he had no he had no uh, no dra there's no dragon on his on his tattoo. Um, but yeah, no, it was just a, it was just a hand. Uh, I guess you could call it a gauntlet if you wanted to, uh, holding a sword. And uh, guard or age, this this you would know would be the symbol of the gauntlet order of the gauntlet. Yeah, the hand holding the sword. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I forgot. That's not what guardian has, right? Guardian just has a gauntlet. Guardian is just a It is a gauntlet. different symbol. Yeah, okay. it is a different symbol. Yeah, at this point, Hank speaks up, so is part of the Lord of the Gauntlet. I, I had never heard that about Jeff, but now that you say that, that makes sense, given his tattoo. Didn't Steve have a tattoo also? What's the Order of the Gauntlet? Any of you who know about it can explain it? <laughs> I didn't really read theirs as much. <laughs> okay, so ba basically, the order of the gauntlet is is their their big thing is bravery in the face of, of danger. Um, they're very much more of the holy 
they they kind of believe in the the, the favor in Trinity, which I I don't have the Torm, best. Helm, and Tyre. Yes, are the the Trinity, and they're basically the the gods of of um. Sorry. It's basically an order of paladins. Yes. And okay. smiting undead is so their thing that they don't care about much else. Correct. Oh, so that's why Jeff's hyped. That is why they are in the middle of the jungle, so that they can just smite evil to their heart's content. And not have to deal with anything else. Wow. Damn. Speaking cool. of that tattoos, was... I, I did notice a tattoo on Steve right before he died. It looked like some kind of, uh, like a stringed instrument or a, a lute or a harp of some kind. At this point, uh, Why? Wingaka Otamu puts his head in his hands and he just says the word harpers. Correct. What you... as much. I was, I was going to turn to him just like, can you tell us about these harpers, Mr. Otamu? I, I, I'm gonna also step over to Lord and like poke him and just like hold out my hand for the note. He doesn't have it. I don't know. Oh, I thought. Yeah. Guardian oh, still has, has, it. has Guardian it. has it. Guardian still has it. Turambar has it. Oh, it's, it's, it was okay. still in Guardian's position unless he explicitly gave it to one of you and I missed it. No, he oh, just well, showed he's right us. Next to me, so. yeah. Can I like? Sure, I can hand you the note. Okay. Yeah. Like I, I just wanna. Uh, I'll just. Pretend I said something to ask you to, like, pull it out. I thought Lord had it for some reason. But yeah, I think we might as well just, you know, pull the note out and... He, and maybe he... stumbled on a bunch of information because that's what we do. Right. <laughs> um, so he, he takes the note from you. Um, basically looks at the first two or three lines. Crumples it up and puts it in his pocket. And says thank you. I'll get this to you. Uh, at this it. point, I ask, "What did that note say?" <laughs> hey, can't read. Somebody explain this to him. So, so, I pull out my book and I flip through the pages of the notebook, and then, and then, like, I hold it out to you to read. Can't read. I can't read that. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> out of character. I'm aware. <laughs> but I'm just like, here's a copy of the note, and I hold it out to you. <laughs> And he probably stares at it blankly. D and I'll, I'll, I'll... Karen, I can't read that. <laughs> it's like, oh, and then I'll, I, I'll read it out loud and laugh as Wakanga turns white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does it say? Because my character wouldn't know either at this point until you read it. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting it in the older journal so you can read it. Okay. But if you want me to read it out loud, I can do that too. No, I can, I can, I, I didn't know that. All right, because we're also running short on time here. So oh yeah, this I'm, is the second time this. I've opted not to read it out loud because it is fairly long. So. In character, you read it out loud, though, right? Yeah. Well, and, so, in character, I'm reading it out loud also, right now. It's, so okay. Earlier, I told you in Sylvan. It's not strictly pertinent, but it's what you guys are planning to do right now, as an FYI. So I would strongly suggest you read that in the downtime between the sessions, so we can resolve this one. Okay. Yeah, I figured it's not super relevant yet, but the way this is working out it just works too well. Mm -hmm. So if you hand now that I'm note curious. to curious. So did you hand that note to Wakanga? Because if you did, then he totally just took it from you and did not give it back with any indication. He said, I mean, he said that he would get it to the right people. Yeah, I think we did. But Orn well, apparently has a copy in his notebook. That's Guardian's decision, but yeah, I would have Why? It you down. took the note from me. Yeah, he, he gave it to you, and then you said you gave it to Wakanga. And then you said all this other stuff that was happening after you gave it to Wakanga, and he didn't, didn't give it back to you, so that's what I'm wondering. No, I never took it from Guardian. I just asked him to pull it out. That's what I said. He handed it to you, and you, you either would have taken it, or Wakanga would. So if you didn't take it, then Wakanga has it. Okay, well, okay. Wakanga we would have grabbed it when, I, when he handed it out to me. Okay, so Wakanga does not have the note? No, Wakanga does have the note then, because I didn't. I wasn't intending to take it from Guardian. I was okay. just asking him to pull it out. So and, Wakanga you know. has the note, and he crumples it up, put it in his pocket, and said he'd get it to who needed it. May I ask who needs it? Harpers. I'm. Well, what is your relation with the Harpers? I help them from time to time. I believe in what they they believe in. 
out of character, can you remind me on what the harpers do? Um, no, because in character you should probably ask him. Oh, do, I know know? Do, know? do I know anything about the Harpers? No, I thought we discussed the, the, that. Only, the only person who knows anything about the Harpers would be Age. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Then I'm, it probably won't be much. I'm having trouble keeping the different groups separate in my head. Mm -hmm. Like, I need, to, I, I need to make a more detailed list between sessions. I'll, I'll give you a handy, handy handout, or handy links. Or that would be appreciated as well. I, I have notes um, on it in my uh, Word document, too, Tree. Okay. So, so he would he would have then explained to you that the Harper's main mission is to avoid too much magical power falling into the wrong hands, and the wrong hands is literally anybody. Um, their 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 main tenets are that um, if you have power, it will corrupt you eventually. Um, that no one should be powerless, and that uh, magical art they're they're very much. Um, collectors of magical artifacts, but more for the intent and purpose of keeping them away from um, from everyone? Everyone. That's... And they don't want to use them themselves. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna just turn to Cinder and say, really but don't you have a bunch of magical artifacts? <laughs> Dangerous magical artifacts, not necessarily magical artifacts, period. Oh. And Cinder, okay. so, so Cinder does have magical items, but they're, she doesn't have anything of, of the sort that they would probably care about. Like maybe a soul monger. Soul monger would be something the Harpers might be interested in. Um, but that I'm note just... seemed to indicate that they were not interested in that, and they were interested in something else. <laughs> I'm I'm immediately going to turn to Syndra, and just like ask her very seriously: Do these Harpers know about our people? Yeah. Referring to Twilight and I. Yep. Unabashedly, Ooh. she says yes. And I'm just, like, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I, I feel like we might have a slight conflict of interests and a slight difference in perspective about such powerful magics. Is there a blender going on in your bunch right now? No, sorry. Blowtorch. Blow what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Alright, so, um, conversations need to be winding down. Now that all that information has been said, um, is there anything else you'd like to ask of Wakanga uh, or Syndra? Would his stables be Why here or somewhere Jeff? else? Uh, so Wakanga um, says that Jeff knew about someone else in the jungle he didn't he had met. Um, I assume that that uh, they are looking for him, and then he realizes that he said him and uh, curses under his breath. Yeah, I definitely want to say to Syndra and Wakanga that uh, I'd like to know more about the Harpers at some point. Well, I'd um, be more than willing to, know, to introduce you to one of them. I I just want to get a fe get a feeling of whether or not their ideals are that far off of my own people's, <laughs> because I feel like we could potentially be allies. So are you? So but so there's what also are, what equal... are your people interested in? And I can answer this question more. So, really. you said they want to keep magic away from people because it can potentially be dangerous. Which that they, would they be... want to keep they want to keep dangerous and powerful magical items away from people. They don't necessarily care about the alchemical potions that give you healing or anything else like that. These are very explicitly like <laughs> there is this thing that has this large uh, yeah, large so rumor it's... about it about it, and uh, if it happens to fall into the wrong hands, it can destroy things. Like, that's the sort of magical power level that they would... Like, they would be interested in the Soulmonger. Uh, they would be interested in various other legendary magical items, but um, if it's beneath that, that's probably beneath their notice. Okay. Because I was thinking more, like, where, kind of, where the line is on what they want to keep. Oh, you know if, what I mean? if, they, if they think that you guys have too much power, they will be actively come after you and, and try to disrupt that power. Yeah, see, that's that's one of the but things I was. I would not necessarily about. be concerned that they think you have too much power. No, I think we'd have probably have to be pretty fucking powerful for that. Yep. Not I imagine they don't. Three. They probably aren't aware of all the stuff that the sanctuary has. Also. Not necessarily. Y I mean, yeah, hmm. but just you're, that like you're pretty good at vetting your numbers. 
Yeah, exactly. Like, that's you, why you would, I asked. You, would, yeah. you had not heard of Harper's before, but part of the reason why you might not have heard of Harper's before is simply because they have been kept at out of your area. You yeah, so I feel like they might know about the sanctuary, yeah. but I imagine they wouldn't be aware of it. It's full power. Or necessarily that if you have any secrets, what those would be. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so... <laughs> my okay, so they're not a major it, threat dress at this point. Like, my perspective mm -hmm. on it, Gree, what I was trying to compare with the Harpers is, like, we want to kind of record as much magical knowledge as we can on pretty well, much anything. Having having the information but, in itself not not something that the Harpers are against. They're against having the the magical items themselves. Yeah, and we would have a similar interest in keeping particularly well, dangerous things under lock and key. So it, right. I, it sounds so like we... Harpers may have come to your monastery before in search of knowledge of some variety or in search of more information on something because they know that that resource exists. But um, the, if you had encountered them, you would have not known that they were Harpers. Yeah. Or okay, I, I cool. imagine potentially even giving us things to dispose of. You yourselves were not aware of any interactions like that? Well, yeah, that would be that would be above us, so. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, that's just, like I said, very similar, so I was curious if it's a potential ally or not. I'd definitely be interested in meeting one of the members, which I will say in character. Yep, well, the, they tell you well, they tell you that you, you already know Leslie is among them, and uh, if you wanted to meet with them, he's traveling with Jeff, as far as we know. Well, that's good to know. Thank you. Do you know where Leslie and Jeff are staying tonight? Uh, I don't know any details. They kind of left here in a hurry, and I didn't I didn't really ask for too many details, because the more I know, the more dangerous it is for them. We were hoping to speak with them before they left. Well, I, the, as best I know, they're, they're somewhere in Mylar's throat. Preparing for their expedition early tomorrow morning. Okay then. Oh, and the dinosaur race is two days from now, right? Not the next day. Dinosaur race is two days from now. Yep. Okay. And what was your question, Val? Actually, no. I don't worry about it. It's not going to matter. I can just do this letter. Okay. How long would it take us to get to where Jeff and Leslie are? Uh, you could get there uh, probably right around dark. Left right now. Let's go, guys. But you'd, have to, you'd have to probably look for them. They don't know exactly where they are. Yeah, I, I might the idea of, like, to go talk to them, though. Anyone else have anything I... else? They... Uh, so, last chance. Anyone else have anything else they want to ask of Wakanga or Syndra? No. Nope. Okay, moving on, then. I just want to tell Wakanga, like, thanks for meeting us, and it was an honor. Mm -hmm. And he he comes to you guys to, you know, uh, the sucking up stuff. Because I'm sorry, I uh, made him very embarrassed and exposed a bunch of secret stuff. But well, he I mean he would laugh hard. He would have laugh heartily at, at at you mentioning that he exposed things because he doesn't believe that he exposed more than he should have. Well, but, not that but... he exposed things, but that other people exposed things he was involved in, and that we just kind of stumbled on. Well, so and he would have explained to you that his involvement was purely. They sometimes use his house as a as an operating point. Okay. Because he he welcomes what what they are about. Um, yeah. So he kind of supports them passively. Yep. Cool. And Cinder, you would realize was not a member of the Harpers. <laughs> like that. Yeah, too. I picked that up. <laughs> okay. All right. Have a good night. So you, you make your say your buys. Um, Congo makes it known that if you ever need to meet one of the other merchant princes, he would be willing to set up the, the meeting with, for, with, uh, for you with them. You guys are all on his guards' personal lists as, as people that he would be willing to see any time. I am going to ask him nice. where, his, uh, <laughs> where his stable is, so I actually know what I'm going to end up writing. Uh, his stable is in the Tiriki Anchorage, which is where all the rest of the dinosaur stables okay, are. Okay, so it's not, it's not here then. That's all I want to know. No, not here. Uh, it's, uh, southeast side of the city, so the bottom left of the map. Yep. Yeah, okay. so, yeah that's right. That's right. That's, I knew it was there. It's just I didn't know if like he has a big fucking house. I don't know. 
Can, yeah. You guys can see the label of Mylar's throat, right? Yeah, I was gonna ask. Yeah. We have to go to that the center area for that, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, here. That's right here. We actually don't see the label. I don't yeah, see it. that one. Okay. Yeah. Right here. Let's go talk to uh, whatever their name are, Jeff. Jeff and Leeches. All right. So you guys make your way to Mylar's throat, and I'm gonna want uh, investigation checks from everybody. Uh, Boy. Yeah, we actually have to like, walk to around that. looking for them. Yep. Nineteen. Um, or do you want to use your? Oh, could you use your cantrip on me? Oh yeah, I. Oh, um... uh, sorry. Also, I I forgot to mention this, but I think Uber and Guardian both had inspiration, and if you want to use that to gain advantage any time, you can use that. So Is that, I thought inspiration was just plus a one d four. No, that's bardic inspiration. That's different okay. than DM gotcha. inspiration. Gotcha. DM inspiration is. I understand. Allow you to cancel cancel disadvantage or gain advantage on a roll of your choice, and then after that, you've expended your inspiration. Oh, so, um, I keep forgetting about this, but Christ just reminded me, I have guidance as a cantrip, so when we're all in a group like this, and we're looking for something and rolling investigation, like, I can literally cast guidance on everyone, and everyone gets an extra d4 on their roll. So, Archibald, you are the only person that, that hears anything or discovers anything about the, where Jeff might be at um and you you would realize that they basically went up and camped right next to the jungle tree line mm. and they are they're basically like going into the jungle immediately upon the sunrise um if you wanted to adventure next to the jungle you probably could could if you wanted to find them but that's that is where they are okay so I, and it would I... take you probably until midnight to reach them from here okay so i let the rest of the party know Okay, so I, I talked to some guys, and uh, apparently Jeff is uh, camped out by the by the jungle, spending the night in a tent. So uh, I don't know if we want to be venturing out by the jungle in the middle of the night, but if you all want to do that. If we want to talk to them, now is our only chance. Pretty much. Um, we are out here. Be careful. I mean, I don't, have, I don't know the last time dinosaurs got this close, but... I think I have done so. Has gotten really close to the walls before. Like Mylar's throat has been evacuated due to incursions from the jungle. So yeah, okay. So just uh, be ready. I will cast light. All right, you have a light. So at least we have a light source around us. I'm gonna have my pull. I'm drawn by the way, just kind of like carrying it over my shoulder. But it's gonna be, um, at like it's not not, not in like a ready position. But I have it in my hand. And Mallow's throat is a bit of like a canyon type thing, right? Oh yeah, you are surrounded on all sides by vertical walls that lead up to trees. Hank is also holding on to his weapons. <laughs> all right, I so, think it's so, fair to say we all my gauntlets on. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess you guys are taking it easy, so slow, cautiously, that sort of stuff. Yep. I'm just gonna go running in there. All right. I'm gonna well, stay in. I uh, I kind of always have my weapon out, so. So. Uh... Oh my! Walk with it like a staff. You guys, <laughs> as you as you get closer to the tree line, you can see that there is definitely a fire going um, next to the tree line, and uh, you hear loud, joyous noises coming from it. Like they're kind of partying Does a little sound bit. Like Jeff? Um, you have not heard Jeff's voice this loud. So it might be a little bit harder to distinguish from the other ones, but there is definitely a Jeff-like voice that is there, and it's much happier than you've ever heard Jeff. Is there a second okay. voice, or just the one? There's three. There's 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 three voices, which means there are probably four people since Leslie can't talk. Yeah, I'm gonna shoulder so my think. pole arm again at this point because <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to walk on them up up on them at night with a weapon drawn. So I'm gonna shoulder my pole arm now. Yeah, let's uh, let's approach. This might be him. So you uh, you reach the tent. You, you get closer than you thought you would without without them noticing because they're being so loud. Um, but uh, Jeff notices you, and he, he walks right up to Orn and shakes his hand, uh, shakes his tree branch hand thing. <laughs> Jeff, I'm kind of you. surprised. That's... <laughs> you guys are coming to join us then. Well, I'm not sure about yeah, that. We uh... have more business in the city, but we heard you were planning on rushing out in the morning, so we tried well, to well, come we, find we have you a... while we could. We've, we've wasted too much time already, and uh, the last last place I saw saw Atris was uh, was a few days away from here. So we're trying to get 
as close as we could, can to the last place I saw him. Atris? Atris Simber, yeah. Yeah, well... Blank look on my face. We're still a little uh, short on information about what's going on. Which is part of why we rushed out here to see you before you left. Well, I, uh, I mean, I... You, you've been healed, obviously. That's good to see. I'm, oh. You're doing better now? <laughs> the, the, the bastards in the frickin' caught me in the jungle. They didn't they didn't know who I was or anything, and they they just assumed that I was a lunatic that didn't deserve the time of day, but uh, Syndra thankfully knew of a priest of uh, of uh, Helm that, that uh, cured me of my ails, and I am uh, <laughs> I am happier than I ever have been in a very long time, let me tell you. Well, I thought of treating or seeing to you myself, but I can I, see, sure can I just I'd do an actually insight be check on this guy, too? Yeah, of, of, of I'm Jeff? Yeah, just like... Yeah, go for is, it. Is he crazy in a different way now, I guess, is what I'm looking for. Probably gonna fail this, but... He's not crazy, he's zealous. Okay, no, I he's perfectly fine. <laughs> like, I I get the impression <laughs> that he's just a little super hyped because he's healed and he's about to go kill To you, me. this sounds like a different kind of crazy, but um, to someone more more knowledgeable in the, in the matter... It is it is the typical zeal and, and zealousness of 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 uh, someone that would be higher up in the order of the of the gauntlet. So, but I wouldn't uh, know. Uh, yeah, hi, Hancho Paladino. <laughs> he gives you the secret uh, secret paladin handshake. <laughs> I fumbled through it a little bit. Isn't it just a gauntlet bump? It is. <laughs> <laughs> So you punch him through the tent. So, so are you guys heading out to Fort Vengeance then? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, they, I don't, Vengeance? They, they had another one? Those insane bastards. Uh, no, we're we're gonna go find Atris. Yeah, who is this Atris? Uh, he's the guy that helped me in the jungle. He's the guy that that uh, I after Righteous fell, I I found him. Well, and he uh, he brought me to the edge of the jungle and. Then I ran into the frickin' Zentarum. Those bastards. I uh, had corrected. How long ago did you run into the Zentarum? How long was I in jail? I don't know that. He doesn't remember either. Do I know? Well, he was in there I mean, longer I than... I, he, out was, of he was, in, he was there before you were, Age. Was he there before I was? Because I like I was in there for six... Age was there the longest. Okay. I win. And he was yeah. there longer than Jeff you. Jeff was there months? longer than any of us. Well, it's been a bit then. A little bit. And as far as he knows, Jeff would have explained this to you as well, Guardian, because you have a very curious shield to him. Um, but he would have basically confided to you that he does not know that the people in uh, Camp Vengeance would know that he exists. Exists or is still alive? Still alive. Same difference. But yeah, they, 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 he is not reported in to anyone of the Order since he's been in jail. Because he did not, he just was not capable mentally of conveying that information to anyone. So there's absolutely no element of the Order in the city? Uh, well, the, he, he tells you that the only element that he discovered was his other friend here. And, um... Yes, who is he traveling with? <laughs> he has, Leslie is there. He's sort of staring at you curiously, and he's every time Atrus's name gets mentioned, he kind of cringes a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go say hi to Leslie. <laughs> he nods <laughs> at you. Um, so he, there's a half orc female paladin that's with him. Um, I'll give it, give her. I'm searching through my book. I've been searching through the entire thing started for her name because she actually has a name. And then there's another male. Um, Sort of, he's more of a, a knight or a warrior type, um, but they both look like they're in heavier equipment than they probably should be for entering the jungle. But that doesn't seem to daunt them any. Ooh. So uh, they're half orc or and really well trained. A human knight. They're both humans. Oh, well, sorry, half orc and then human. And Leslie was uh, with the Harpers, right? Leslie, that you are aware, is of the Harpers, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but we don't know if 
that like Jeff knows that. No, he, he do don't we? know. No. 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 All he knows is don't... that Leslie was very interested in finding Atris, and these other two people were there to help. Were oh, from the order, are willing to help him, and then uh, because they're they're venturing into a place that is uh, they're basically heading to, due south of here, which you are you definitely know is the center of where the undead are. They are also well aware of this. They're excited to get to combat. How did you guys get out can, of prison? Can I put Leslie who, aside? Who are you asking? Christ. Uh, Jeff's in the front, right? Jeff's in the front. Yeah. So you're asking Jeff? Yeah, because he wait was he with us when we yeah, first yeah, talked to Yeah, he was with us. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so they also are on the same. At least Jeff is on the same deal that we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and Leslie right. was just mysteriously out because he was watching us. Never mind then. But Leslie um, was the guy who got you there in the carriage and had mm -hmm. been, as far as Syndra was aware, her assistant for a while while he she, he was on Chult. And he, you guys know that he has been in prison for longer than that. You're wondering how the heck that can be. But... Indeed. So are you guys looking also looking to cure Syndra? Can well, I'd be willing to help with that in any way I can and figure the best way to do that is getting, going into this jungle here right now. Uh, because we're planning to head out, too, but probably... Oh, good, you can join us tomorrow morning! Oh, but we, we can't leave for another two days, we kind of agreed... Yeah, I'm just kind of like, I just frustratedly sigh as well, like, he when looks he, like, this. he looks like that. <laughs> I don't know about like, this wee wait? nonsense. Yeah, you know, uh... We could just disappear into the forest. <laughs> I have too many things we have to take care of here. You guys can go on without me if you need to, though. We I'll can't finish it. just go out into the jungle until we're better supplied. Uh, so Undril Silvertusk is the half orc's name, and she is a female half orc priest, not, uh, not a paladin. My bad. I'm gonna do a quick glance over, and what do these guys seem like? How well supplied do they seem to be? How much food do they have? I guess is what I, like between the four of them. They're generally equipped for like a week. Okay. Make a mental note of that. And Jeff does not seem like he's... Like there's anything wrong with that. How long do you think you're going to be out there, Jeff? As long as it takes. He flatly answers. <laughs> How deep are you going in? Well, I mean... Probably 12 days to get to our last Iatris. Hmm. Do I notice their food supplies also? Yep. So you would realize that that is not enough for 12 days. How are you going to eat out there? Well, it's the jungle. There's food everywhere. We'll find Does something. Do any of us know how to cook? I have, I have survival proficiency, Wait, but that's Jeff, about it. Does that mean you have any tips for uh, what's good to eat out in the jungle? Like, well, I, animal I, wise? I mean, I've... Dinosaurs? <laughs> most of what I've eaten out there is bugs, uh, if I'm honest with you. He kind of stares, smile disappears at that thought. But uh, he's survived on it before, and he knows that he could survive on it again if he had to. I look perfectly okay with this. <laughs> How do you know <laughs> half the thing's poisonous out there? How do you know which ones are safe? Oh, well, uh, there's this good trick that I know for, for figuring out if something's poisonous. Um, take some water, and you uh, squeeze whatever you think is poisonous. You cut off a very, 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 very tiny piece of it. Uh, you put it in the water. You, uh, you boil it a little bit. Uh, you, take, you take a small sip of the water. Wait 10 minutes. If you feel okay, take another sip. If you drink the whole thing, then it's probably okay. I look at him like he's a fucking madman. <laughs> I <laughs> think that might... Easier way to do that. This dude is the ultimate Bear Grylls <laughs> like, piss drinker. Like, is, how are you not dead right now? That is, like, a simplified Jeff, version of an actual Jeff survival tactic, though. He, he, he points to the holy symbol on Guardian Shield, and he says, I have a lot to thank for that man. Or, not not, not that man, but the, the... That god. Like, he has, he has a lot to be thankful for from... Oh, okay. I don't... I still don't know what this means. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I know exactly alive. what this means. <laughs> I don't... Do they have? Oh, I guess I can't see that. Do you have a uh, bug repellent also? Probably. Or do you have some trick to keep that away? He says, "Oh, thanks for reminding me." He takes out his salve and starts reapplying it to his skin. Okay. 
So, uh, do you know if if we if we showed you a map, do you know where you'd end up being on that map after you're up into the jungle? I'm more of a go by sight guy. I'm not too up on the maps around here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> do you any know? Do you know any near landmarks that you might be nearby that might stick out above the jungle? Maybe we could meet you after we uh, venture out. Well, there's a tree that kind of looks like a uh, like, Jesus like Christ. A, it comes up kind of at an angle. Uh, if you look at the sun at about noon, and you trace that down on this tree, it kind of makes a shadow. Looks like a, I don't know, like a, like a large sword. Do you know and, its uh, name? I don't know if you want to name every tree in here. There's a lot of trees to name. No, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All the trees I know back I just, at home I have just names. Have like a, I just shake my head and like under my breath, just like humans. I don't even know what to call the trees. Is there any way uh, you guys could delay your trip by two days and we could join you? I I don't think so. That um, would be rather beneficial for all of us, I think. No, you see, I think I think the intent here is to get to Atris as fast as we possibly can, and we're we're basically picking up a a, a few year old cold trail. So uh, uh, any I mean, any longer we you... wait here is not. I don't I don't want to wait any longer. I but if it's, you were in if prison it's a, for over six months, like as, if it's a wait for few years plus. old. As as you guys are, are are talking about this, he turns to back to his group, kind of ignoring the rest of the conversation. Is what do you guys think about going tonight? And they kind of look at him and kind of think about it a little bit. And Leslie definitely is shaking his head back and forth, like no. And the other people are basically like enthusiastic about it at this point. Oh shit! I mean, does, does he have a dagger? Or does he have a, like a dagger or a sharp knife on him? On him? Right he has. Right it looks like a chain crossbow on him. Cha <laughs> <laughs> do, do they have any cutting implements? Because I just don't like any of them. The, the there is a great axe that the half orc has, and the uh... they don't even have survival knives. Well, not obviously. There's, I mean, they have backpacks. I'm just gonna kind of like. I'm just gonna kind of. Uh, grab one of my hand axes and just on the ground. It's like if you maybe we might be able to meet up with you if you go and draw this symbol on a couple trees, and we'll try to see if we can follow you in, and just make. So I'm just gonna have him point like an arrow with a cross in it in the direction that he's gone, on the ground, and say if you can make a on a tree every thirty yards or so, we might be able to follow you and meet up later on and help you out. Well, maybe I'll do my best to remember to do that. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll make, I'll make an effort. <laughs> he has other I zealous Leslie, thoughts. I look at Leslie like, please, can you do this? Leslie shrugs. <laughs> Karen Gar Karen Gar is rapidly losing composure at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, your friend's over there. What? What's his name? Um, his name. Putting toward the night. Still, I, yeah, I need to look. I, I was looking, and then I got distracted. By the oh, okay, that's fine. You can give it to us later. Well, it's. Uh, I'm coming up on it shortly here, so. There only owe so many names. It's got to be here. I think I went past it. Balder Felrond. Balder Felrond. D a l d e r Salder. Felrond. F a e l r o n d. And he's a male Teth uh, Tethrian human. And he's a knight of Torm. What's his first name? Zelder. Z or Z Zalder. Z A L D E R. Got it. And what was the first name of the orc woman? Umbril. Uh, Umbril. Yep. Okay. Your your friends over here are they? Um, were they with you when you found? Uh, Atris? Ah uh, no. No, they weren't. Uh, they were they were sent here by the uh, order out of uh, Baldur's Gate, and they they got some new orders for the uh, camp, and we're gonna head that way after we uh, meet up with Atris. He says, expecting to find Atris after a few years being in prison, like unabashedly. You, you ever you ever think what happened if Atris is dead? Atris dead? You <laughs> no, that's not that's not possible. Why not? Well, you I mean he's he basically been wandering the jungles as far as I know since he's been here. Alone. He's part of the order. Oh. No. I 
in fact, uh, you get the feeling that the only thing that he knows about Atris is that uh, he was he was like this holy angel sent by Torm down to him. Um, as far as is, is in my, his 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 mind's eye, is a holy angel sent down to rescue him by Torm, um, and bring him back alive from the jungle. And he wants to go back in there to find him to uh, to seek more answers. Also, hmm. but he is he is as far as as far as as far as is concerned, Atreus is like this invincible god of a man. <laughs> Sent down from the heavens to uh, help help him in his his in his compatriots' quest to uh, rid the jungles of all evil. Despite only knowing him for the brief moments of consciousness that he had while he was being rescued. All right, guys. Well, looks like we're not changing uh, their minds, so maybe we should get back and get some rest tonight and. Get an early start on the day tomorrow. I want to pull Leslie aside. How far is the inn from here? Three. What? I want to pull Leslie aside. Yep, you're able to. And and pull out my notebook so that we can converse through text. And I'm going to uh. uh what should what should I write? Um. Uh. I was told I should speak with you about the Harpers, but it would probably have to wait till a later day. Do your companions here know that you're with them? He, uh... He looks at what you read. His eyes go maybe a much wider. He shrugs, and then looks away from you. Starts walking away from you. Uh, I probably should have explained to him why I know that, which is what I was going to do next. <laughs> well, this is a waste sad. of time. He's not. He's not sad. He, in fact, he looks like he's going for his gear, and is making a motion to the other two to start putting out the fire. Yeah, I'm going to gesture to Leslie again, like the symbol I want him to make on the trees. But I know he's going to forget to do it anyways, and like this is a lost effort. So he's going to annoyedly turn around and like wait for everybody else as, to see. As you make that gesture, Leslie goes to the tree that he's standing next to, makes that exact symbol, and then starts heading off in that direction, followed <laughs> by the other two, and Jeff turns around to when they're leaving. Um by the way, their tent and everything else is like still standing here, and they start heading off into the jungle. Uh Not Jeff even takes his the chain. Tent. Yeah, Jeff levels his chain crossbow like he's he's uh the uh, the guy that holds, holds the machine gun out in the, in the movie The Predator, and he walks into the jungle like he's all tactical and stuff, waving back and forth around the trees. Jeff is fucking crazy, and I love it. <laughs> well, that well, was a waste of time. Uh, around, uh, at least we play. got Jeff to be crazy. <laughs> How many tents did they so, leave behind? One. Like what? Once what they're out of sight, I'm gonna start dismantling the tent. They, when okay. he leaves, though. What was that? What kind of impression do I get from Leslie when he walks away, though? Like, I don't know if that was an, okay, I'll help you guys, or that was a, a fuck off. That was a, I have better things to be worried about right now type of shrug. And, uh, an excitement to get out of the situation by heading into the jungle uh, with a group that is more prepared than you are to go into the jungle. Okay, well, to avoid he, that was avoidance, clear as day. At least he knows that I know what's going on, and I might be an ally now. I don't know well, if you get that impression, actually. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and that is not clear to you either. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to kind of just turn around yeah, and start I heading back really to the city. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to explain why I was asking, so... <laughs> yeah. Did they leave any other equipment behind? Um, basically, it was they took their backpacks and their weapons, and the thing they left behind was basically the tent. Um, their bedrolls were... Pretty much on their backpack still. It looks like they had, were basically just, were just taking a break to, to take a couple drinks. And before anyone had brought up leaving earlier, um, their goal was probably to camp here tonight. But beyond that, it was just the tent that was left. All right, so. I finished packing up the tent and I hand it to Orn. You mind carrying this? We have a tent now. <laughs> yeah, One two-person we'll tent. Carry it. I'll lash what I can onto my bag. And then I guess we're heading back into the city for the night? 
Yep. I'm gonna just head straight back to the because you because I thought I was gonna go and try and talk to the person for uh, who is now in Fort Bellerin because I thought Bellarian. he was because because I thought he was here. So yeah, so there one of your one of the that is Fort Nianzaru, and that is more like the people monitoring who comes in and out of the port. And there, yeah, I know, I know, but I large, thought he was there. A large gate that that comes up and down to, to close off the port in case of invaders or something else. Um, so the people that are are, are definitely Zintarum, not Port Bellarian people. Oh, they are Zintarum. Okay, I'll still, Zintarum. I thought I actually want to go there. Um, it's midnight. Again. Oh, I'm sake. going to an inn to go to sleep. Christ, I'm yeah, just gonna go. Yeah. Inn, you know, uh, I'm gonna go back to the inn. I say it that the night before and ask her if she's seen you know any of the people come in that I asked her about or is it the main bartender there now yeah she has no new information for you okay um your stay is five silver pieces there um or, um vile everyone who's staying at Kaya's house of repose is one gold piece per night okay and, wasn't it uh, wasn't it five silver last night yeah <laughs> that was I, I said that I, I got the, the I know I'm asking her wrong. <laughs> and the uh, the gentleman in the hat um, says, "Well, I figured I'd give you new folk a uh, first night discount." How about this? I have a, an instrument with me, and I know lots of tales and things, and uh, lots of songs. How about I entertain your patrons tonight, um, well, and we keep it's it at five silver? a bit late silver. for that now, um, but tomorrow night I'd be more than happy to have that service, and I'd be willing right. to compensate half of your your night stay for that. There's All right. A, there's a book signing tonight. I yeah, believe he missed there. tonight. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, he might he might still be around here somewhere. I think I saw him packing up his things, getting ready to leave. Yeah, I, I, I would like to find Bolo as soon as I get there. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna so put down my one gold piece and uh, head upstairs to my room. <laughs> okay. I actually have uh, out of character. I have no interest in staying at Kaya's. Well, like, I mean, you're here right now. If you don't want to stay here, you can go to the other place, and it's five silver. Yeah, like, I'm probably going to wind up going to the other place just because it's cheaper, and I literally just need water and a place to stand. What's the other one called? Uh, the Thundering something? Thundering, Thundering lizard. lizard. Thundering Lizard, that's what it was, yep. Well, I, I can come with you, Orn. We can go to the other one after we talk to Bolo. Well, that's my plan, so... Yeah, All right. I'll stick with you. Uh, I'm assuming Volo stuff's going to have to wait till next week. No, you can, you can, uh, I mean, Volo's stuff should be very quick, because he's getting ready to leave. Hey, Volo. I thought, I thought you guys would be here sooner than this. I guess I'd appreciate it next time if you give some more heads up on when you actually click to arrive. I'm well, so sorry, we, we got way late, by. Business. Yeah, we, we had, had business we had to take well, care of. Uh, I, I happen to have exactly one book left. Well, I've read all of your other books, so I'm definitely interested in this one. I didn't. I'm, I'm gonna look at um, Orin and oh, say, the same. I, I, I can provide 40 silver if you can provide the last 10. It's gold. Gold. Gold, gold, gold I mean, yeah. <laughs> How can you provide 40 gold with everything else you bought? <laughs> I didn't buy anything else. All oh, right. That was yeah, fun. because we, did, we need to prepare for this fucking expedition, <laughs> and they're spending a sixth of our fucking. <laughs> 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 oh, no, out of yeah, it's actually, I think it's going to be really useful for the expedition, knowing the different types of monsters and things that are out there. You're going to flip through the book when the encounter starts. Hold on, guys. I mean, I'm going to study it. <laughs> I've, got two, I've got two days in town. I'm bored and I can study it. <laughs> you can't even read. Um. Yeah, that's why Orin and I have to look at the pictures and he'll explain it. <laughs> uh, I just want to say to uh, Volo, like, ask him if I can buy him a drink and... If we can share some stories, uh, he says he doesn't have time for that anymore. He's got to get going to to uh, the merchant place, the merchant prince's house that he's staying at. Oh, which merchant prince are you staying with? Wakanga Otamu. <laughs> Funnily enough, <laughs> we were just there. No, uh, the reason we were held up tonight is because we had a meeting with him. So uh, oh. it seems we have some we share some acquaintances. Well, I should I'm, ask I'm... him about the caged magpie. No, um, so, he's gonna be staying with Wakanga, with Wakanda, Wakanga? He's not gonna be in town for very long, he says. Yeah, but we have another he's staying days, there. at least. He's, he's staying there tonight, 
and he plans to be visiting all of the Merchant Princes to try to maybe set up a franchise of his books here. Or do you um, have ten gold? Yeah, I was gonna say we can split the price, but I was hoping to like actually chat and get a bit of a discount. Okay. Uh. That doesn't seem likely at this current time. If you find I him know. later, you might be able to do that. But finding him later, yeah, that's what I just mean. get it. Like, well, I I want to, I, I definitely want to purchase the book. So we'll split the price on the book. Even. So twenty five each. Okay. Um, and then I want to say to I'll put in I'll put in thirty because I'm excited about the book. Now. Okay. Can I interest you guys? Special deal here. Five gold. I'll sign it. I. I mean, is, I thought they were already signed. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably be up to you, or you're the one who appreciates his writing. I haven't read any of his books. And you know, and he'll he'll say that because he knows you're a fan. He'll he'll reduce his normal signing fee, and he'll drop it down to uh, two gold. Yeah, I'll play. I'll sign it. Extra two. All right. He signs the book for okay. you. So, and it's very it's a very large and very distinct script across the very front page. In fact, he writes it almost across the forward, but not quite. Well, I w I'll tell him, like, I'll make it a point to try to get a chance to actually sit and speak with him and share some stories. But yeah, he's, he's it's really unfortunate to do that. that our uh, business at the moment is... that our business at the moment is conflicting. And he's, he's very interested in hearing more from you guys. And anything else you find out on Chelt that maybe he doesn't have in his book, he'd be uh, very interested in, and would be ask willing to compensate maybe, you for. Ask him if he'd be interested in buying maps. Oh, that's that's actually a good question. Maps uh, don't I, have a very good. He, he he responds exactly like, because maps don't seem to. Maps don't tell a narrative. I'm looking more for the stories of what you guys find. Well, I pat my notebook and just go like, I have I have plenty of stories. We have art, we have maps, we have many things, and I'm sure I have some things that would interest you to know about, and uh, could potentially contribute to one of your books. So I look he forward says, to I that. have no doubt, but uh, tonight I must bid you good night, and I will uh, be taking my leave. Have a good night, thank you very have much. Have a good night, Bolo. And he nods to both of you, dips his cap down, takes a bow, and then wanders off and leaves the uh, leaves the inn. Well, if Orn is heading back to the Ring Inn, I'm gonna I'll come with him. All right, everyone else, pay up for the night. Already did. Uh, I'm I also gonna take twenty-four gold for supplies. I'm gonna go take the time to. Uh, it's just an hour, basically. I'm gonna now bind the, the my new glaive to myself, so it counts as a bound weapon. Okay. So it's Volo's uh, Guide to Monsters? Volo's Guide to Monsters. And yeah, basically, so the way this, this is going to work... And I have a tent. The way this is going to work is... Um, I'm going to assume that you guys are taking time to read this every so often. And um, basically, when we get to an encounter and there's a monster you haven't encountered before, information that I can give you on it, um, you guys will have advantage on those rolls. Okay. How much do we heal for a long rest? Uh, you, heal, you heal your full hit points and you regain half of your hit dice. Okay, so getting all of them back then. Yep, long rest is the is the reset on your health. Is other Plus people still awake maximum. in the Thundering Inn? Oh yeah, there's a party going on. I'm just gonna like <laughs> stand in a corner and be a tree. Yeah, so buy out of. You're not even gonna buy a room. People start trying to just swing off your branches at some points during the night. <laughs> I mean, Whenever they're... that happens, I just shake them off and give them a disgruntled look. <laughs> they are very surprised that the tree is alive and talking to them. <laughs> like, <laughs> super surprised. Because they're also all drunk off their asses. So I know. I, I will pay for a room for myself, but then ask Orm to come up with me and read me part of the book. Yeah, I'll do that. All right. and start going so, through the book. Um, last person to deal with the ends, that person notices... Whoever it is would, would notice the... Uh, the notice board that has a list of guides. Oh, thank you for reminding me about that. <laughs> I did mean to ask when we got back here. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Does the notice board have one. any sort of jobs? Well, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna make the, the the handouts for that visible to everybody, so you kind of decide where you want to go next after this. Uh, I'm also gonna look on, I guess, on the notice board for any sort of um, 
like work that we could do possibly on the force and double down on a payment on a job if there's, if there's any money that we that if there's any jobs that notice we notice boards pretty much have the guides on them uh, that are at the uh, what kind of notice board is that Well, I mean, the, the, basically the ongoings right now are are mundane, like, go shovel shit and get a couple copper. Or there's these guides that are talking about their expeditions they want to make into the jungle. I'll make a note of a few of them then for next time. Yeah, so Vile, I what? know you're, like, annoyed that we just spent 50 gold. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm the one saying that. we should stay here because we need more supplies. <laughs> but I really think the benefits of having a literal book that tells us about a lot of the really nasty shit here is going to pay off more in the long run than hoarding that 50 gold. And it is 100% in character for both Twilight and I. Ca yeah, like, character's vine is just becoming freighted oh, at this shoot, point. Oh, shoot, Like... The, uh, just just the at this point the the this the the complete lack of help anybody has actually been is starting to annoy Karengar. I, I got the cartography kit and I have a tent. Hey, I think that that we took from our friends Volo has been very helpful. Wakongo Otamu has been very. I don't helpful. I don't even know Volo exists. Okay. Um... Wakongo, uh, we'll we'll so Wakongo, we'll she could possibly be. Wakongo well, screwed me over. Cinder's the only one. He's been offered the services um, of a freaking gladiator and turned him down. He's he sounded like he could have been helpful, but okay. we should probably go back. Wakongo yeah, is um, forcing me into tomorrow. a corner. <laughs> hey, you, you got you out of paying the gold. I would have paid the gold eventually, but he wanted it fucking now. So no. You guys, we're going gonna... Maybe next time, don't just drop acid covered shit on rich people's floors. Yeah, I'll floors. just take damage. I'll just Did completely you not taking see damage. How nice that wood was. I swear to God, Karen Gar is, is like losing it right now because I'm fucking losing it. <laughs> I'm gonna say, um, get there at midnight, Twilight, and Orin are gonna hey. stay up like two hours I... reading the book tonight, learning about all dinosaurs. Well, right. all I can say is I don't know what you expected. <laughs> Like, oh hey, they just expect me to hold on to thing that's actively burning through my hand. Maybe not Neat. just drop it on this nice floor and find a way to dispose of it. Sure. Wasn't your I mean, you were like, no, oh, no, not when I was something the acid one. Oh, you Man, gra no, grab a pot that you think right is cold. You could have thrown it out into the yard at least. No, you you right grab a pot that. that you think is cold and it's really fucking hot. You say, oh. I'm just gonna like fucking not like, and you you have it above. I'm no, just... you literally drop it before you think. Yeah, exactly. That's what you do. Actually, you let but go you of it. You don't just leave it there and let it sink into the freaking ground. I was, oh my god, in my <laughs> mind, my guy was like waving my hand, like, "Ouch, Jesus, fuck!" For the good next three I, seconds. It wasn't even I'm... like, a, "Oh crap, I should pick that up," or like, "Hey, uh, sorry about that." It was just, "Oh, let's have this conversation." Oh, by the oh, way, my, oh, my, my <laughs> weapon is so... now in your floor. Regardless of that, the thought process that led to this was I'm gonna summon a fucking weapon in the middle of a conversation with this person who just released me a fucking day. Because I needed to know if I needed actual more money or not, like to re prepare myself. It was an actual thing. You and then beyond that. In the middle of his mansion, or his guest house, in the middle of a conversation. Sindra has literally been the only helpful person this entire time. <laughs> when, like, and he has been. He, he's. Today I learned grappling a CR5 character with zero health at all. <laughs> I didn't grapple yes, my was. good like, I did. Him, kind of. You know, you did. Yeah, you, I, you did. I don't know if I'm going to give you any of these, this map money. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm really excited because one of the um, guides in there is River Mist and Flask of Wine, which are two really famous tabaxi. And apparently they're also cheaper than everyone else. <laughs> huh. Interesting. I, we might have found our go-tos. Why are they cheaper? Oh. Because they're weird tabaxi and they're probably stealing all your shit while you sleep. Uh, well, apparently they are not arguable. So I strongly suggest you read through every single guide's information. Yep. I haven't because read them all yet. some of the guides talk about the other guides mm -hmm. oh. in their notices. 
Oh, I'll definitely read through those and uh. Yeah, but I'm gonna say that we can talk about that in the because I want to wrap this one up because I was hoping you guys would at least get to the point where you could pick a guide and maybe even meet them. But a few other things happened and it took a lot longer to shop than I thought it would. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, can't read so. Shop and not really buy anything. Let's um, why don't we right? all read them through this week and then we'll discuss it in the morning as if we're all talking about it when at breakfast. In a, in a way, we made a lot of progress because we got a lot of information. Oh, you definitely did. And a lot of planning, well, potential planning done. We On finally learned hand, about the politics. Information dumps are really confusing at first. And this one is probably going to take a little bit to sort out. Uh, yeah, like, like I said, I have, I I have about a page of notes for tonight. I can share that with you guys all if you want. Yeah, so, so the factions, um, if you look for the Faerun factions, like on the D&D, &D, um, they're, they're basically the same ones that, that you... Uh, the ones you would be aware of on Chalt would be the same ones. Um, I can provide those links later, but I'm not going to look for them now. Um, also, keep in mind... So this wasn't really used a whole lot this last week, um, but maybe discussion about the guides and stuff might happen more, but... Feel free to also use the uh, role-playing stuff, role-playing channel as a resource. I'll talk about this stuff with each other that I think will add to add to how the decisions are made, and maybe also have a little bit more interaction with with each other and learn a bit more about each other as well. It might save some time as far as bringing everyone up to speed on various things during a session. So yeah, like there's a lot tonight where. People are talking about things where the rest of the party is just like, uh, what the what? fuck are you talking about? What do you know? <laughs> Which I'm, I'm, I'm happy that, that that the note actually got... I am actually pretty happy that you guys discovered the note. <laughs> I feel like we should give, like, at least a note. I know, I still don't note. care, though. I know, I know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I, I can't make it that exciting for everyone just yet. But if I gave you more information about it to the point where you'd be like, oh, I have to go after this immediately, it would be... It would be too much. <laughs> At this point, for what how, how far you guys should really be in this. You're a sanctuary? I'm just wondering when everyone's gonna ask, like, why are you trying to vet people by whether or not they know about you? You're not that special. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a fucking walking tree. La di da di da. Uh, when I click on Musha Reeb's handout, it doesn't. Nothing comes up. Um. So I, I guess I can read that Happens one to you. Me. I, it happens for me too. Yeah. Or you can't see anything? I can't no. see. I can't. Correct. I can. Oh, I see everything. Yeah. I already read all of them. Um. Pretty much, he has the standard fee. Um. And he says, if you there's adventures, what you seek, join my quest to reclaim Mahara, Hara, Her Harak Amar, uh, which is his clan's ancestral forge. Is he a Dorgar? He is not a Dorgar. You would know that the dwarves of Chalt are albino because they've all been forced out of their mountain homes. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Yep, by things that have gone down underneath the, the earth, where basically it's a fiery hell and not livable anymore. Yeah, so they're not evil dwarves, they're just... No, they're white just dwarves. white because they... <laughs> dwarves are wow. weird. Where they're, they're, dwarves. they're local. Yes, they're, they're, they're... any albino dwarves you encounter are likely from Chult. Ethnic dwarves. And so, yeah, he, he's his main goal is he wants to go reclaim his, his ancestral uh, relic, which is known as Mordain's Gauntlet. Mordain, again, is one of the, one of, is the dwarven deity. Um, his symbol is literally like a forge or a hammer. Um, so he, he wants to, so he can recover that. He says if you love Dwarven kind, then uh, he'll hear, hear his plea and join him on this epic quest to return to the rightful, or, uh, rightful owners. And he will waive his fee if you promise to help him in that quest. We know who to talk to if we want to kill some fire newts. Fine with that, because I have fire resistance, and that sounds like it'll come in handy. But on the other hand, River and Flask are up to the task. Jesus. I'm not going to read through all those right now. 
In other news, so just shared my notes from tonight. So in the Discord channel, there's notes if you guys are so confused about people or locations and stuff. So you can use that for a quick reference. Though not all of you guys know everything that's in there. Actually, I think that's pretty much just file. Wait, what? <laughs> I don't know. My character knows the least. My character just yeah. doesn't know things because he's like, I want to go get things done. So I have like the names of all the different locations and inns and people we've met so far um, in oh, the so notes if you want to use that for reference. Right file? I don't want to say Six, that eight, I, I had extensive notes. File? I had planned the part about you being requested to go race one of the dinosaurs before tonight. Um, and when you said that I don't like dinosaurs tonight, I was like, oh god, this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you, like, like, literally, like, literally, like, literally, dinos thing going the whole time, too. Yeah, like, literally, the it's backstory, I guess. Like, he lost, there, there was, he went into the jungle with 25, with 24 other people. Seven of them, including him, came back because the rest were eaten by fucking dinosaurs. Yep. They were fucking slaughtered. Like, he has a PTSD that comes to fucking velociraptors. This so, is why, like, I, like what I was uh, gonna mention wild, it, but it, the yeah. Velociraptors are the size of a turkey. Uh, well, Dinonychus. so the dyn the dyna, what are they called? The Dinonychus. Dinonychus is then, which is why, like, I would have mentioned it, but it never came up because everybody else was doing anything. He would have fl he flinched away at the market when he saw the Dinonychus. Like, he's he's gonna go there. He's like, nope, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Those are my nope, favorite ones. Nope. No, nope, yeah, absolutely you fucking not. Like flinching away from the dinosaurs and everything. Yeah, but I just I just thought it was perfect when you mentioned that, and I was like, oh god, he's gonna love tonight. <laughs> <laughs> do uh, will I? Because I actually do have the proficiency land vehicle. Does riding a dinosaur count as land vehicle? I can tell you how the race would work, but I'll I'll save that for next time. That's fine. I mean, if that it's far. like mount rules, the same as a horse, then land vehicle should work. Yeah. Well, right. it's, it's, it's it's not dexterity. a great animal. So handling. dinosaur racing is very special. In the way sure, if I don't get my business, is for something um, I legitimately have. Well, you've ridden horses. He's ready to, uh, have you ridden dinosaurs? Bet against vile. <laughs> yeah. I, I would uh, totally expecting to get knocked out during this race again. I uh, I will actually talk to you about that in the RP channel. Don't worry, BB. I can lift the dinosaur up. But uh, so I'll also, also let you know um, the dinosaurs that you. Like, you guys will have free information about the dinosaurs that you can actually enter into the races. And the race this time is basically a, um, is a, uh, you would know it as a no-holds-barred race. which means Oh, so we can kill each other? This is, well, the dinosaurs will kill each other. If you want to. Oh, excellent. I want a Tyrannosaurus then. Excellent means my plan. So, so he has one of each, he does not have two of each. So, whichever one of you wants one of the types of dinosaurs, that one gets claimed. Uh, you'd have to give me a list of dinosaurs, I guess. Yeah, I'll give you that list. Not right now. Yeah, obviously. I am getting so excited for this. <laughs> well, again, it's not tomorrow. It's the day after that. <laughs> In game. Yeah. We might just do a time skip tomorrow, unless because we don't actually have this. Like tomorrow's the first day where we don't have to all out and do something. We just have to find. Well, a hey, guide. Maybe a guide might be handy. Well, yeah, but that we don't have to actually like we don't have to. That's like the only thing we don't have to go three or four places. Um, that day, because all we could meet up somewhere in the morning. I want to get information about how to ride the dinosaurs. Also, and yeah, I, I want to go down to the pens and check out the dinosaurs yeah, ahead of time. I could potentially forget this by the next session, but I would intend to get up early and go to like Wakanga's home, I suppose, in an uh, attempt to find Volo. Okay, so here's the, what I'm going to say: is the tomorrow can probably happen all on the RP channel if you guys want it to. Happy with that? That um, works for me. And then but, the other um, thing just go to the dining room. But if we don't want that to happen, and we actually want it to happen during a session, I'm also okay with that. If you guys just want to have tomorrow morning to be like discussing all of this stuff, I, I'd want to. I'd want to um, inquire. Or create a plan for the day. I'm also happy with that. So however you want to handle like, it. I'd like the only thing I'd want to know is maybe I can just excuse. I want to inquire the like about one of the friends in the Zentarim and see if he's at the fort. That's all, and see if I can talk to him. But we could do that in the RP, I guess, because that's just between you and me. Well, I need to. Uh... <laughs> I need to actually look up which friends I said were where again on your character. Uh, you said what? You said one was there and one was in the four. Um... Right, but there were specific ones that I said were places, and I wanted to make sure I got them right. Yeah, well, that's that's what fucked me today because I thought that one of my friends was going to be there. Then it turned out that he isn't. Then it turned out I have another friend that might be there. So you have one in the Zentarum, one in the. Where did they go? I thought you had them all written down on your sheet here. I do. I do. It's in my bio. No, it's not. 
Oh, that's, that's Rombar's it. vial. That's why, I'm, that's why they're not there. <laughs> Racist! We're not all the same! <laughs> we're all the same! <laughs> okay, um, you all look alike to me. Alike. No, one went to the Flaming Fist. I oh, know that's where Kreetek went. I know Eldar Kretek went to the Zen Turn. Cool. Anyways, I'm heading out, guys. Later. Yep. Oh, yeah.